damn, I spent 45 minutes trying to change from portrait to the portrait uh, aspect of the phone. Every time I changed it to portrait on the iPhone, there's a 12 step process. And I did that and it would go to horizontal mode. And then it, when I live stream, it would go back to portrait mode. So here's, here's what's going to happen. I don't kn even know how. I don't even know how it went back to the horizontal mode. I didn't do anything. Nothing at all. So we're going to talk about Popeye 1. And we're going to talk about this piece of paper here. See this piece of paper here? With all the scribblings. These are notes. These are notes. This page. And this page. This page and this page are notes of Popeye One's insane amount of clips, music video, music videos, and captioned words. An insane amount of all of those things. So I would venture to say of all the editors, now, of all of the that nobody has ever put as much work into a video as Popeye One. And even though I made a comment to that effect, none of his so-called buddies or friends have responded to the comment, giving him admiration for his hard work. Because YouTube and the people on YouTube are basically uh, sanitation type people, garbage men and women, if you might have, which because I don't like certain bloggers who have lied through their teeth to people like Yad's Emodia Vlogs and people like Popeye and Nico and Mike Hunt and also uh, Mick Fisher. Because I am totally, 100% against that man and his ability to move people's mentalities in such a way that he will outright blatantly lie to thousands of people, if need be, in a fashion like a politician who has been trained for that job lying, deception, and fraud. And he had Yad's Amodia convinced that he has never, ever said that he had a harem, that he never said he wanted a harem, he never said any of his women were part of a harem, he never said that he ever had a harem. Period. And Yad said, oh, so you've never said you had a harem. And this man blatantly lies. No, I never said I had a harem. That is the trolls that said that. I never said it. I tell you what, Yads, because you allowed that deceptive subhuman blogger to lie to you, incessantly without correcting him and you had to know the truth any possibility of you and I meeting has just been reduced to zero you know the truth you've always known the truth and you let him move you across the board like a giant like he was the queen and which is probably not so far from the truth and you let him move you around the board so that you would agree and say what he wanted to say. And that's why people on Popeye's show have never, not once in 18 hours that comment's been on the page, have I ever gotten a response. Because all of you people are afraid of the Giga Ego. You're afraid, in, in Yad's Amodius perception of fear, is that he won't donate to help you feed the children. And that's a valid point. 
but to sell your soul to a man, a so-called man, a man who has been fraudulent on YouTube for five years, constantly lying and making up stories about myself and other bloggers. To allow that to happen to you on your show, that's your show. You're allowed to do that. You can believe or think you believe or want to believe knowing that once again, the Giga Ego has bought and paid for another vlogger's soul. That's my opinion about that. So why has nobody commented on my chat in Popeye's stream, even though I gave Popeye the highest possible comment, the highest possible admiral admiralty of a comment, the, the best rating anybody could ever give. Did Popeye pin it to the top of the page? No, he won't do that because that would go against his so-called man friend, the Giga Ego. That would, and Popeye knows the guy's a liar. He said it in a previous show. I don't agree with your lifestyle. I don't agree with what you do. I don't agree with the way you do things with your wife, your girlfriend, your concubines. Popeye said those words. But Popeye is also friends with Nico's experience. And Popeye is not going to jeopardize Nico's experience as possibility to gain from the Giga Ego, monetarily wise, a place to live, a dinner, whatever. Popeye is Nico's friend first, and he's not going to allow that to happen. But me, personally, I have had it with the liars and the frauds on YouTube. Can I, if Yad Zamodia wants... Can I prove, oh, and by the way, since Yad Zamodia posted the video allowing the Giga Ego to lie, blatantly lie about everything, she has never once been to my channel, nor is she actually welcome to come to my channel. I want nothing to do with anybody that allows him to spoo his lies, half-truths, and hateful rhetoric on YouTube. In order for him to be a good guy, he has to lie about several other people. No, Yads, I don't want you on my page. Or Eastie Travels or any of you people. And anybody that wants to be friends with the Giga Ego, that's two thumbs up. But I don't want to meet you. I don't want to associate with you in any way, shape, or form. And by posting that great and admiral will comment on Popeye's channel, and not one of you people responding to the comment shows to me whose side, so to speak, that you're on. You're on the side of liars, frauds, and people that are masters of deception. Now, I'm going to go to my page. This wasn't the exact video that I wanted to make today, but this is what it is, baby. That guy who you had on your channel yards, Decept deceived you from the get-go. And in your title, he will he bear all? He lied to you from the get-go and you allowed it to happen. You and me, we're done. Whether you knew it was true or whether you couldn't see through the facade, either way, we're done. And you knew we were done when you posted the video because you have never been back to my page to say hello. So you know what you did was wrong inside your head, but Yads feeds the children and she needs money. And she saw the opportunity to gain the system by being friends with the Giga Ego. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. And how is there any other possibility of a different venue? She allowed the man to lie for two hours. She allowed him to move her to say, so you never had a harem? No, I never had a harem. I never said I wanted a harem. I never had a harem. That's the trolls. I have 10 videos, Yads, that will prove that he, not only did he have a harem, but at some point it was 34 in a harem, 
then reduced to 14 plus his new and current concubine, HK. Okay, so that's factual. You want me to send those videos to you? I'll post them on a third channel. That's not mine. And then I will send them to you. And then you will see that for years he's been saying he had a harem. He has always had a harem. When he was in Cebu at the nightclub, this is my harem, and then meet the girls. When he introduced his harem to Nico, he said, this is my harem, but this is the one girl I haven't slept with. I want to give her to Nico. Is that truthful? Absolutely. Is it accurate? To the word. Ask Nico. But, of course, Nico may or may not go along with this because then Nico, at the end of the day, if he needs some sort of subsidizing for his trip, he's going to go along with the, what the Giga Ego said. And, in fact, he did by not correcting what the Giga Ego said on Yadzimodia's vlogs. He went along with it. Everybody knows it was a total fraud, a total lie, and what some people call YouTube. It's just YouTube. So it's just YouTube for the Giga Ego to be allowed to destroy my reputation but and make himself be something that he is not. And by allowing, by allowing his woman to be passed around like candy at a church festival, that is just a disgusting display of quasi-humanity. Popeye even said as much indirectly on his show. But now apparently they're all buddies again. And that's cool. But you, anybody that has anything to do with the gig ego, I personally don't want to meet. That All that meeting, the Lobach River, the cruise, the, all that stuff, anybody wants to know how to get to the Lobach River, the three ways to get there, just send me a message. I'll give you the exact directions, how to get there, what it costs, what times it's open. I'll help you out in any way, shape, or form. But meeting you, probably out of the question. To allow somebody to try to destroy my reputation without contradicting the giga ego, knowing that he was falsifying and lying, blatantly lying to everybody, that puts you out of whom I would want to meet for any reason. You no way would I allow that to happen. And had I been there in the live stream, I got there about two minutes before the live stream ended. I posted a comment, never did see it. Because as soon as I put the comment there, somebody removed the comment because I was gonna go into it deep. I was going to prove them wrong by giving you the names of the videos, what dates the videos occurred. But as soon as I posted a comment, the Giga Ego or one of you other trolls that have to, that are attached surgically to the Giga's Ego, you removed my comment. You've done this before. You've, you'll do it again. On Big Kevin's show, you did the same thing. So let's go to see what kind of comments I have. Not that I really care. But we'll go see anyway. Let's go right here. And then we're going to talk about my notes. Receiving 250. I have a lot of notes. I'm going to do the original show for Popeye. And I'm going to do the original show talking about Barry Jordan. And I'm going to do the original show talking about Barry Jordan's girlfriend, Shah. You're watching a sideways video. I can't get it to go right, no matter what I do. All right, well, I'll put it like this. Okay. And I, I went through all the functionalities on the phone three times. And three times it went to the horizontal mode. And three times, I guess, it reverted back to the vertical mode. But it doesn't matter. Scott Del Fuego, thanks for stopping by, Dennis. 
Yeah, I could do it on the laptop, but then, I, Dennis, you always have a good answer to everything because you're really smart. But if I do it on the laptop, I can't show the screen on the laptop and the comments and the video clips I want to show that I'm going to post or show on the laptop. So, yeah, that's a good way of doing it, except that except that I paid 78,000 pesos for a phone that won't go horizontal. Okay, how's that for an answer, Dennis? That it went horizontal, and as soon as I pressed the live stream now twice, it went vertical. Okay, when you pay that much money for a phone, it's supposed to do what you program into the phone. Enough of that nonsense. I've been doing this 45 minutes to get my screen to go horizontal, and 45 minutes it flips back to vertical. Now, did I bring it to the store this week for that very problem? Yes, I did. And they did what I did today, and it went horizontal in the store. And when I turned it back on today, it went vertical. Scott the Fuego with a prescient comment. You people, you people will allow lies and deception without comment just to stay out of the controversy. Yet you people will laugh and go along with anti fazio hatred and be amongst the popularity. You people are garbage, according to my philosophy, that you allow somebody knowing outright that he lied, and you allow a lot of people to lie blatantly. You have a guy that says, I don't wear a black hat. I've never lied. And that's all he does is lie. And you flock to his channel. You people are garbage. You really are garbage amongst people right there at the lowest level of humanity. For allow people to lie just for the controversy and the drama. You people are real garbage. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. To allow somebody, I never lied. I don't wear a black hat. I always tell the truth. I am not in competition for Super Chat. I've never been in competition for Super Chat. And then he mentioned Super Chat in one video over 100 times a few weeks ago. And then he demanded Super Chat. And then he said, if you don't super chat him, he will block you. And then he demanded $5 in order for you to comment on his page. But he never demanded super chat, according to his words. You people are stone stupid to allow that to take place other than the drama factor. Well, I'll have none of it. I'll have none of it. I will want to meet none of you. None of you, including Nico, Nico's experience, because he allowed it to take place as well. So the one person that really hasn't joined the fray was Mick Fisher. But he also has seen the fray and the fracas on YouTube and not negatively commented saying that's not true. So, Mick, we're always going to bang a pot for you because of what you did in the past. But as far as meeting any of you people, I have no intention whatsoever of meeting any of you. Yads, all I got to say to you is that if you need to kiss somebody's butt that bad to get money for the children, that's a piss poor way to live your life that you will go and allow somebody to lie for two hours on your show. Totally fraudulent statements, one after the other, after the other. Tell me I'm lying, Yans. Make a video saying I don't believe a word that Fazio has, and I'll give you the links to prove that what I'm saying is true. Go ahead, do it. Because nobody can correct the truth if it's in video form. Nobody can correct if... This is my harem. This is my wife kissing a bar fine woman. You think that's normal? That's crazy stuff. That's crazy stuff. Go ahead, Yads. Say I'm lying.
Go ahead, just insinuate it. Insinuate that you don't believe it. Watch and then send me a, a method to send you videos in mail, not on YouTube, because it's going to come from another channel that's not mine, and you're going to be able to watch the uploads. Scott Delfuegos is making fun and teasing a man that has had a run of bad luck, including serious leg ulcers that became dangerously infected, a hernia illness, a con man, a con man for a partner, and taking advantage is pretty sad. And so that's another thing, that piece of garbage, the Giga Ego, knew that Warren was a con man. And he went on and defended Warren. He knows the guy who says, I don't wear a black hat, is a con man. And he took that guy's side because the Giga Ego needs to have his ego fed. And by trying to destroy a man of reputation like mine, that's not destroyable. Nobody has ever proven that I stole any money from Warren. Last week, I watched a video where I performed some sort of a sexual act in front of Skype. Let me tell you something, little man. One day you might have to repeat that directly to somebody's face, and we'll see what happens at that point. We also know for a fact that the little man said that Warren gave me 100,000 U.S. dollars. Warren gave me $1,500 for a computer and a phone, and that's what I bought with it. But the little man gets his facts confused. Maybe I'll make you repeat that too one day. And to the little fella saying that anybody was going to go to his island and visit the police department on his island or the mayor, where does he come up with this crap? Nobody ever said that. Nobody ever insinuated that. Nobody ever did that. Your paranoia, little fella, your paranoia is what made you go to the police and possibly the mayor's office. Nobody ever said they were going to your island. Never did they say they were going to your island last week. Never happened. Last week, the week of my birthday, September 25th, Nobody ever said it. You're a liar and a fraud for even making that statement on your show. More lies and more fraudulent activity. Nobody ever mentioned the name of your island, nor did anybody mention they went to the police department on your island. Your paranoia got you to go and question whether or not that happened. Nobody ever said that. You're a liar and you're a fraud for making statements like that. Nobody ever said it. It never happened. Yet your paranoia forced you to implicate yourself in more baloney and cheese. Nobody ever said they were going to your island. Ever. Well, a year and a half ago, maybe, but not the week of September 20th or 25th, that never happened. You can't prove it. It was never said. You made it up inside your, in some place in the fictitious cavity of your little brain. You made it up. Nobody, no, I went to the police and I checked to see if anybody gave the police. Nobody ever said they were going to go to your island and give the police anything. You made it up. And you people that are controversial, that want to see the drama continue, give him money for this kind of garbage on YouTube. So, Yads, Amodia, we are done. Don't ever, don't ever, other than give me a, a way to send you the videos, don't ever think that you and I are ever going to be friends. Ever. Never going to happen. You allowed it to take place. You knew it was taking place while you allowed it to take place. And then you left the video up.
A liar, says Scott Del Fuego, assumes everyone else is lying. So now we're going to go on, and now you're going to see how, how the camaraderie uh, 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 that, that, that culminates around a ball of sperm, bigger than YouTube itself. And that includes everybody that allowed the Giga Eagle to lie on Yadza's channel and everybody who never corrected the Giga Eagle's lies after the video was posted. I tried to do it. I got on about two minutes before the end. I left a comment. My comment disappeared. Never got onto the channel. Never got onto the page. Never got. So I was either blocked from the get go or somebody was watching the comments and deleting them before they could get posted. So what does that mean, Yads? That means you allowed a moderator to remove my comments that were truthful so that no one would see them. Yads, that happened. So you are in no position whatsoever to ask or even think about becoming, coming to Bahal and having dinner with me. That ain't never going to happen. And, and you will be well rewarded, I'm sure, for money for the children. And I hope that's the case. But that's how the person that you interviewed and you allowed to lie and you allowed to defraud your good name, because your good name is now not so good anymore, in my opinion. You allowed somebody to lie to you repeatedly for two hours, either not knowing or not caring with the incentivized aspect of maybe he will give me some money to feed the children. And if that's what you were doing, that's a worthy cause. But you also have been compromised, like Big Kevin has been compromised, like Nico was compromised, like Barry has been compromised. Oh, yes, let's just go through that one thing that the Giga Ego did. I have the video, Yads. The Giga Ego was in detention because Barry is not in jail. He's in detention. The Giga Ego was standing here. The Giga Ego's wife was over here somewhere. Barry's girlfriend was here in the picture and Barry was behind bars in detention. And the Giga Eagle said, Barry, would it be okay? Yads, listen carefully. Barry, would it be okay if Shah joined my harem? Yads, if he didn't have a harem, what is he going to say, that he was kidding? And then Barry said, well, it would be okay, but as long as she doesn't have to make love to her cousin or something like that. And then they had a small conversation. So did if he never had a harem, and if he never said he had a harem, and if he never insinuated that he had a harem, and if he said he never wanted a harem, why did he ask Shah? if she could be part of his harem. Yeah, you have been tricked by the biggest fraud on YouTube, even far surpassing the man who doesn't wear a black hat. And Popeye, he's more than happy to surgically attach his lips to the Giga Eagle's chocolate factory. He's more than happy to and has allowed it. So, Popeye, you can, Pop, can make, I'll, make, I'll make videos. I don't care what you do, Popeye. I don't care what you do. It makes no difference to me. I've had people just last week say that I had phone sex or Skype sex with Warren H. That's not true. No proof of that. None at all. But, of course, the man who doesn't wear a black hat did not show his face. Nor will he ever say that to my face. Ever. No will he ever say anything like that to anybody's face, ever. He'll never do it. 
He didn't even, he was too scared to confront tiny little, teeny little Barry Jordan at, uh, thank God it's Friday's, because he's afraid of physical confrontation. If he's not afraid of physical confrontation, where is the answer to Mike Ross's question? Where is the answer to Mike Ross's question? Okay, so let's go to my notes. I got a lot of notes. I got to find... I got a lot of notes. And then we'll do the regular show. But Yads, we're done. You, you want send me an email address, I'll send you those videos. If you don't believe me, if you already know it's true, then we're done. And there's no, fr no further need to talk about me or you on your channel. Any of your friends, East D Travels, any of those people that you are friends with, please don't come on my channel. No need for that. No need at all. None whatsoever. I, I don't need you on my channel. I never needed you on my channel, and I'm never going to need you on my channel. I cannot get... Okay, so we're going to talk about Cha, Cha being chastised on, uh, in her comments section on a live stream that she did yesterday. She was chastised by the man who doesn't wear a black hat, big time chastised. I got five videos up here how to remove, how to change the orientation, and five videos I did each step of the way, and five videos... I'm, I'm removing them now. So, Popeye is the greatest editor ever. Let's get that up on the screen. Let's get that. You know what? You don't really need to see my notes. Because to flip this screen back and forth is a pain in the neck now. It, I just clicked the button twice and nothing happened. Okay. All right. All right. So where that's the end one. That, that one now can be moved over here. This one here. Okay. Here is my notes from today. Popeye 1 is the greatest editor ever. But you go to his channel, and I gave you the link to his channel. You go to his channel, and you see that how long my comments been up, and not a single person, not one, not even one person commented on my comment. Not one. Because you all, you all surgically attach yourself to Popeye's rectum. You all do that. Why, I don't know. But you all do it. So, have I just eliminated, who did I eliminate today? Definitely Popeye. There's no doubt that Popeye and I, well, probably, well, he didn't do anything bad for me. I mean, but, 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 but being that I talked about all of his friends, I didn't say anything bad about Popeye. But he allows the lies to take place on his channel. That I don't like. Definitely eliminated Yads. East D Travels definitely eliminated him, whatever he is, a blogger in, uh, in Thailand or Malaysia, I think, wherever he is, uh, definitely eliminated Mike Hunt, Michael Hunt, he's a good friend of Popeye and the Giga Ego. Apparently, there was a show last week where everybody admitted that the one person they communicate with is the Giga Ego. All those people that are best friends with the Giga Ego, we're done. We're 100% done. There's no reason for any of you to ever come to my channel, comment on my channel. You're welcome to do so, but there's no reason for you to do that. I probably won't be very receptive. So we have Mike Hunt, Michael Hunt, who said... Oh, yeah, that's the number one person that I, I... There were so many people. Nico says, I never talked to anybody more than I talked to the Giga Ego. I've tried to help 
Nico, but has he gone against the Giga Eagle knowing that the Giga Eagle lied? No, because you people will all surgically attach yourselves to the Giga Eagles, but for some reason, I am not like that. Giga Eagle doesn't have enough money to persuade me to change my mind that he's a sub bl sub-level blogger. That's what he is. A sub-level blogger. A man who doesn't, who manipulates the truth in his favor, knowing what the truth is, and then denies the truth when caught in the act. You want me to post the video of him saying, I want, we're in Manila, I want you all to congratulate a woman named Honey Blonde. She is now in a serious relationship with my wife. Do you really need to have that video posted on YouTube? I don't think so. Do I have the video? Yes, I do. Could I post it? Probably. Would I post it? Probably not. But if you call me a liar and you send me your email, I'll post that video on a third-party channel that has nothing to do with my channel, and I'll send it to you. You people allow a man to have the freedom to hand his wife over to a bar fine woman. And you think that's entertainment. But remember this. When E.T., whatever, that, that, that fake uh, CGI channel, expat trash in the Philippines, when that woman or man started that channel, I said I'm going to send all of the Giga Eagles videos to various people on YouTube. He, he removed 26 videos within an hour. Why? If he was so proud just one hour before, why would he remove 26 videos? Because he knows that he would get exposed as a sex pat in the Philippines. That's why he did that. Michael Thomas Fazio. And the fellow that doesn't wear the black hat, keep, keep it up. You're allowed to say my name. No problem with that. But what I understand you are trying to do is you are trying to get me to be triggered and say something illegal on YouTube in your direction. Because that's exactly what you did to that idiot and liar, Roberto, who said he doesn't have the video of someone offering my attack at half the room's rates in the hotel next door. Roberto, you're either lying and and you do have those videos that I asked you for, or you're lying saying none of your friends have those videos when in fact all of your friends have videos of everything about that guy and Barry Jordan going back 10 years. So you're a liar, Roberto, and you lied about a lot of things to me. You're an absolute fraud. But you, the guy who wears, doesn't wear the black hat, you got Roberto triggered to where Roberto threatened you and your girlfriend, and then you filed charges on him. You got Barry triggered because both Barry and Roberto have about the same IQ. They didn't know what you were doing to them. So you, they both fell into your trap of triggering them into saying that they were going to do something harmful to you. That's what you do. You've said it a hundred times. I bait people, and if they take the bait, then I have them where I want them. That you said that, and you people still go to his channel and watch his rhetoric and send him money. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if one of those people that send him three or four or five dollars on every show is, in fact, a Giga Eagle. 
just egging him on to watch him lose his mind, slowly lose his mind. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't, would, in no way, shape, or form would it surprise me that the Giga Ego didn't do, doesn't do that. Because the Giga Ego has even said the guy who doesn't wear the black hat is more truthful than Michael Fazio. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that I could believe the guy who doesn't wear the black hat more than I could believe the other guy. You, you, Giga Ego, oh God, just wait. Oh wait, you did, you did, karma did strike you. Oh yeah, remember, remember Inspector Clouseau the next time you watch videos. Remember the Pink Panther? You are a, you are the most deceptive liar that I've ever met in my life. You are a professional fraud, like a politician. I would bet big money that there is a course you take on how to convince people by getting them used cars salesmen say, they'll ask you some benign question, a used car salesman, that you'll, they'll watch you pull up in a blue car. And they say, that's a really, that's a really nice car. I like that color blue. And, and the, the potential customer, Mark, of the used car salesman will say, yeah, that's my favorite color. Then they'll work from that. Oh, you like the color blue? Yes. Which, do you like powder blue or do you like royal blue more? And they'll say, I like powder blue. And then the salesman will say, I like powder blue too. You get them to start saying yes to stuff that you know you can get them to say yes to. Then you hit them with the lies. That's professional sales pitch. That's how people learn to sell cars, so learn to sell insurance. They get you to start saying yes. Do you want me to clean up that job? Do you want a professional clean up on that job when I'm done? Do you know, I didn't even get the job yet. Yes. Would you like the job to have a, a set start date and a, a set end date? Yes. Okay. Will you allow us to come into the house during business hours? Yes. Would it be okay if I park my truck in the driveway? Yes. Uh, will you be the one to pick out the paint? Or shall I pick out the paint? And they'll say yes, they're going to pick out the paint. You get them to say yes eight or ten times, then you, you get them to say, would it be all right if I started the job in two weeks? And they're going to say yes. They're in the yes mood. That's a professional liar. Insurance, car salesman, home mortgage uh, people that sell mortgages. It's a professional sales pitch. The Giga Ego got that down to a science. You were fraud, defrauded. They, the Giga Ego dads, the Giga Ego made you look like a moron by allowing you to post that he was telling the truth. When everybody knows he's not, that makes you less intelligent. That does make you less intelligent because you didn't see through the subdiffuse or you allowed the subdiffuse to take place with the want of perhaps monetary gain for the children, and which is a good cause. But would I allow that to happen to me? Nope, I would not. I've had people offer me a lot more than the money that you're going to get for the children from him in order to do something that went against my grain, and I said, no, I'm not interested in doing that. You're not going to get me. You can't buy me with no amount of money. None whatsoever. And none of my friends can be bought for any amount of money as well. But the man who doesn't wear the black hat, he, easily he's persuaded. The man, the Giga Ego that Yad's had on her channel, easily she's persuaded. Now, Nico's experience, sad to say, he's been defrauded as well. And he also, the one man I talk to more than anybody else in the world is the Giga Ego. Well, that, I heard that and we were done. Because that guy is a professional fraud. 
I don't want to have anything to do with anybody that talks to people like that. That's how I go with the system. Somebody blocked me, Easty, travel freely. Maybe I was blocked beforehand. Maybe the comment appeared. Maybe the comment appeared and was blocked instantly. But did you, it only takes one second to block a comment. I posted on Yad's channel. So... You won't see it on Yadza's channel now. The, the comment I posted, I pushed the send button and it never appeared. So maybe it was in the chat for a half a second. I don't know. It doesn't matter whether you see it or not. I was not allowed to comment on the channel. So it makes no difference what you can see now. It happened in live time. Thanks for the explanation. But whether or not you saw a comment appear and disappear on a channel within one millisecond or 2.2 seconds has nothing to do with the... Okay, forget whether there was a comment or not. You, E.S.T. Freely, you allowed him to lie for two hours. You and everybody else. You, you try to change the subject, whether or not I posted a comment, I posted a comment. Okay, but forget that. The man was fraudulent in everything he stated for two hours. Did you correct him once, or do you not know that he was fraudulent for two hours? Did you not know that he said thousands of times over the last five years that he had a harem? Have you never heard that? Have you never watched anything that he said? Have you never heard him say, yeah, I had a harem. I want, I, this is my part of my harem. This guy. If you never heard that, then you don't know anything about him. Then your conscience can be clear. But for two hours, he lied to you it's about the truth. Mike Hunt, como esta salamat pokoya? Thank you, Mike. Well, Mike, you know, if you guys, if there are a few people, remnants of want to come and meet me, I'll meet you. But don't bring that piece of garbage to Giga Ego. Don't bring him as a lark, as a joke. That won't work out well. I don't want to see him ever again. Don't ever visit me under the guise that you wanted to make sure I was all right. The guy's a fraud from the get-go. He's your friend, not mine. Thank you for stopping by, Mike Hunt. Mike Hunt. Michael Hunt, Michael Hunt, Michael Hunt. Wow, we have some trolls here. People I've never seen before. What are you doing? You have no friends, says Charlene. And if we go to Charlene's channel, she will have no subscribers. Let's go to Charlene, and she's going to get blocked right now. Well, no, nope, nope, she has... 74 subs. Apparently she's a troll, though, so let's, uh, let's permanently remove her. That's one way of removing... Oh, she's been hidden on my channel. She's hidden on my channel. Ah, Scott did that. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Okay, so I have no friends. I only need a few friends in my whole life. Two or three good friends was more than enough to get me through. DNC. He's my friend. 
Well, well, wait. How much money are we talking about? He's my friend. He knows everybody has a price. But nobody on YouTube has enough money to buy my friendship. Nobody. You, you ought to know that better than anybody. Thanks for stopping by, Dan C. Okay, so let's go back to my notes. Popeye, here are my notes. Here is the paper that I used to determine that Popeye did the most possible clips, comments, and music videos of any blogger ever. So each one of these vertical lines here, the vertical lines, each one of those represents either a clip or a music snippet, okay? But the words, well, we got to go to page two. It took two entire pages to determine that Popeye put more time into this blog. It probably, okay, see this? This is page two. See this where it says 50 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. This is 50 words that were posted in captions, five words that were posted, one word, one word, five words, five words, ten words. So in that entire video, Popeye made a total of 155 captions and video clips, 100 vertical lines, 155, and 200 individual words or words with captions. That is the most work ever put into any video on the YouTube genre. That is the most work. So we give Popeye the ultimate kudos and thumbs up. But now, let's just go take a look. Uh, let's see, where, how do we get that? We could do this really easy. Okay, let's go to Popeye's page. And let's see my comment, because we're allowed to do that. Look at this. This is, this is why you people make me sick. All of you make me sick. Here is my comment on Popeye's page. Popeye won to hell with all the other editors. Popeye won put together 210 separate words in captions, 155 separate music snippets and video picture clips, and I counted every one of them. It had to take him 100 hours even at $12 an hour, it cost Popeye $1,000 in time. And these are just some of the snippets and video clips. Now let's go down. It's been up here. The comment has been up for 16 hours. It got a lousy three thumbs up. And not a single person responded to my comment. Where Mike, Mike Hunt made a simple comment, got two replies. One of them was from me, and the other one was from him. Not one person responded to the greatest kudos to Popeye, saying it's good that you realize Popeye is a great video editor. It's good that you agree that Popeye is a good... Popeye is the best video editor on YouTube, but nobody responded in any way, shape, or form. One of these thumbs up, if you notice, one of them is mine. Watch, it's going to go down to number two. One of them was mine. One of them was Popeye's and with the heart. So one person in 16 hours, 300 views, one person gave one thumbs up to my comment. Because you're all a bunch of fruits. This is how YouTube works. Now, let's turn this around again. Some of my videos are CGI. 
because I'm really a recluse. Unlike other bloggers that have been decorated to appear to in an air-conditioned bedroom, but in fact are only appear to be air-conditioned bedrooms. They're really man caves disguised as an air-conditioned bedroom where all the meals are brought in. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is being served to the, to the blogger in his man cave, only disguised as an air-conditioned bedroom. Come on, man. You people give that guy kudos for laying in bed all day and eating three meals a day in bed. That's crazy stuff. It makes, it makes bed bugs, in my opinion. I mean, when you people, there are microscopic particles of foods that fall into the bed. Well, I'm sure his house is not, doesn't have any bugs in it. I'm sure he uses five or six cans of bug spray a week which is really good for your lungs and your liver and your eyes and your brain and your heart, by the way. Very good. It kills the bugs. And it, it also, if you read the, the ingredients on the can, not that you care, but it also causes liver damage in mice and rats. You might want to think about that the next time you throw down a trail of bug spray. I'm just trying to help you out here. You know, sometimes I could help, you know. Let's go back over here. Now the same room manga or a room manga, a room manga, which is different than a, a Vin Diesel. What was that? Manga mangas? The manga? So what was the name of that? What was the name of that Vin Diesel movie? The mongers? The Metro Mongers, the Retro Mongers, the ones where the people were really like in limbo. Metro, somebody posted on my channel, I forget. Okay, bye bye, SD Travel. Freely. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It has nothing to do with you. Okay. But if you don't know who's being interviewed on a show that you're a moderator on, and you allow that nonsense to take place for two hours, in fact, it does have something to do with you. Moderators are supposed to know what's going on on the channel. But that's up to you. I don't, I, I, I don't dislike you. You make videos about fish tanks, I like that. You make videos about where you live, that's cool. But to be upset, you people, all of you, allowed that to take place. Don't take it personal. You're either all stupid or ignorant of the truth. One or the other. One or the other. But if you don't know who that guy is, you've been on... YouTube for a long time. You've never watched a single video where he says he has a harem? Ever? I find that hard to believe because up until about six weeks ago, all he ever talked about was 34 members of his harem, 14 members, down to 14 members, plus the newest concubine. All for, for five years he's been talking about how his harem, how he takes care of his harem, how he takes them out to disco. You don't see that. You shouldn't be a moderator, in my opinion. Dan C is lying. You're lying. <laughs> You're lying. Okay, so. You people, you, you can't. No, DNC is serious. He's never watched a big E video. The, uh, right, Scott is with the truth. 
God is with the truth. He has 10,000 subscribers, and he'll get seven or eight people on his channel, more than me sometimes. But he bought those subscribers, another fraudulent aspect of his so-called truthful persona. You can't, now with me, I could explain it to you for the 15th time. Hoodwinked has 20,000 legitimate subscribers, but I pissed off the establishment, which you might find hard to believe. Maybe, maybe not. I have, a, I have a propensity to do that. So when I talked about one of the owners of YouTube, it got back to her, Susan, and she demonetized 535 of my videos. In one minute, 535 notices that my videos were demonetized and with that within that one minute she put my channel she shut off my channel and turned it back on and i lost any connections to the algorithms that's how that works so did i lose my videos or my monetization not at that time but videos that were getting say 100 200 views a month got like zero views in three months. Because whatever they did, they took the algorithms and the search engine results away from my channel. For I went from having the top, in the top 100 videos about dollar bills, 90 were Michael Fazio's, when she demonetized those 535 videos of the top $100 bill videos, maybe three were mine. So 87 of those videos were removed from the algorithms or the search engines. And they never came back. So I started this channel with 4,000 subscribers the day I started this channel because this channel had subscribers going back to 2012 or 13. They were, they were subscribed and then after six years of a hiatus or seven years of a hiatus or eight years without me ever posting on this channel again, they were removed. That's what YouTube does. If you don't actively watch a page, they remove your subscription. And if then if you don't know someone posted, how can you resubscribe? YouTube has a hundred ways they can bury your channel. And they did it to my alpha male construction channel. They removed the notification bell to 20,000 subscribers on Hoodwink, and they removed the notification bell on 4,000 subscribers on Alpha Male Construction. I can't do anything. And you know what their only response was? Here, this is how YouTube responded to me when I complained that you removed... 4,000 notification bells from my 4,000 subscribers. I made a letter and stated the link of my channel, and YouTube's response was, make a video asking them to resubscribe to get your subscribers back. But if I make a video asking them to resubscribe and they don't get a notification, then no one will be notified that I'm back. So that was their way of saying that they just, they're not going to help me. Could they, could they repost? Could they make every one of my subscribers? I still have 5,000 subscribers. Could they make the notification bell? Sure they could. They could just put all the notification bells on for those 5,000 subs and then they'll have a choice whether to watch me or not. So when you hear the fraud or a liar or a man that doesn't wear a black hat or some snake making up stories that I had Skype sex with Warren H. When you hear stuff like that, understand that YouTube removed the notification bell from 4,000 subscribers and there's no way to get it back. Oh, there is a way. There is a way. You can... Look through your subscriber list 
and then send 10, 10 subscribers a message that says, I'm back making videos on YouTube. And you can do that about seven times. And then it goes into spam. So it won't go to their box. It'll go to their spam box. YouTube can control that as well. So I only did that with about 70 people. And one person came back on and said that the notification that Michael Thomas Fazio put out that you're back on Zionist ZooTube channel, that's the real name, went into his spam box. So when YouTube sent out the note that I posted that I was going to back on YouTube, Zionist YouTube is back making videos. YouTube also, at the same time, made it spam and then put it in people's spam box. They control the narrative. If I talk about the fire in Hawaii, want to see my channel get shut down by talking about something? If they don't control the narrative, why did a dozen channels get shut down for talking about the fires in Hawaii? Demonetized and some of them deplatformed altogether. Not just YouTube, but also Twitter. They control, they are like the outer limits. They control the vertical and they control the horizontal on your channel. You cannot go against what they say. Their algorithms that the idiot said there's no such thing as algorithms three years ago, but now he knows there are algorithms. So DNC, I, all right, well, you know what, DNC, I believe you. I, if I actually, because DNC is, there's no reason for DNC to lie to me, not with the past that we have and the personal information that we, and the fact that DNC helped me with Dallo. No. All right, I believe you. I've only seen one Ricky video. I just don't watch people that don't interest me, says DNC. Okay. Well, I believe you. I, yeah, I didn't know that, but I do believe you because you have no reason to lie to me at all. Neither I, you. So thank you for that. So let's get back to why the fraud says he doesn't have 5,000 subscribers. He bought them. No, I didn't buy my subscribers. But in fact, I do know who bought your subscribers and why. There's a guy who was getting 300, 500 subscribers a week for the last four months, thinking, so he says, that these are natural subscribers. Uh, you want me to give you the guy's name? Come on the channel right now and ask me for the guy's name. Come on. I know you're watching. And then, but, but also... You will also have to answer the question that Mike Ross asked you. Will you or will you not answer Mike Ross's question? So far, you've avoided that question like the plague. So you answer Mike Ross's question with a yes or a no, with your real channel name, and I'll give you the name of the person that's buying your subscribers. If your answer is in the affirmative and you set a date, those are the parameters. Answer Mike Ross's question, put a date down at least 120 days from today. I have 30 more days of recuperation from my operation. 120 days from today, set a date to Mike Ross's question. In the affirmative, that you will in fact, from your channel, in your words, 
And I'll tell you who's buying your subscribers. How's that for a deal? I could give it to you six different ways from Sunday. But let's make a deal. Because you are the kind of a person that would try to snake your way out of a firm date set 120 days from now. A firm date to answer Mike Ross's question. Your name on my channel right now, giving a date. Pick, go to your calendar, take a date, and in the affirmative, yes, answer the question, yes, and answer what the question is. Come on, little man. Come on, do it now, and I'll give you the guy's name because I don't care about him one way or the other anyway. Scott Valfuego says, deflection is the refuge of a man avoiding the truth. He won't do it. He won't do it because that would be something he would not be able to control. All the words, all the powerful words, all the powerful demeaning of other people's vloggers, their girlfriends. And you know what? To the guy who's going to answer in the affirmative, that day, Daisy will be sitting ringside. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. I don't see the answer. Mike Ross, you're going to just have to wait till somebody grows a pair of knits. Sorry, Mike. I did my best. Let's go back to the comments that I have posted for the Barry Jordan aspect of uh, my comments. Oh, yeah, yeah. The rumor monger. What was the name of that? Necromonga. The rumor monger. And the necromanga, two different things. But he reminds me of a necromanga because his life has amounted to a giant double aught, zero minus three. Necromanga and rumor manga. So the rumor manga today spread rumors. Well, no. Okay. This is not a rumor. But he had to drag. Now, I, I'm gonna, let's be clear on this. I don't like Philly in the Philippines, and I have my own reasons for not liking him. He lied and betrayed me going on six years ago. Never did I ever go to his channel again. Never did I ever watch 10 seconds of any of his videos ever again until I saw them on e EPT um ETP expat trash. Never in five years did I ever watch him because I know what he is. I know what he does. I know the kind of videos he was posting by the thumbnails. I don't watch that kind of crap. But the rumor manga, which he didn't spread a rumor today, but he had to see fit to mention Philly in the Philippines, who's a famous blogger who I don't like. And you'll notice that Philly's never been on my channel either. After we had our disagreement going back five or six years, we never said a bad word about each other ever again. But the rumor manga, who did spread several rumors today, said, didn't, didn't Philly's wife, did I hear right, Philly's wife was robbed at knife point? Why did you have to bring that up? Because... That's your method of operation. That's your MO, modus operandi. You have to bring up the most harmful or insightful things on YouTube in order for people to come to your channel to watch your drama. Me personally, I would not have mentioned Philly in the Philippines and that his wife was robbed at knife point, but you did it in order for people to give you stupid chat that you e-begged for about 52 times in today's show. 
that you mentioned stupid chat on your show because nobody was giving it to you. But when you started with the hate, that's what you get paid for. John Blaze, the great John Blaze was right. For you, hate mongering is a beneficial for your super chat bottom line. For you, to hate is to earn money. So, what business is it of yours anyway to bring to, to the surface that Philly's wife was robbed at knife point? What, how did that help you? Other than it got you super chat. Because that's what people want to see. They want to see you hate. And when you hate, you earn money. John Blaze, he gave you the perfect equation to make money. The more you hate, the more you earn. You also said... Shah, okay, I could turn this around. Whoa, PA Trucker. Hey, thanks for stopping by, and, and thanks for the love. Oh, uh, yeah, so we have to first, we have to get a pot, and we have to get PA Trucker's name up on the, uh, on the screen because that's what I said I was going to do. Anybody who sends a super chat gets a royal shout out and their, their name and channel link up on the screen and I will post it three times and we're going to try to get PA Trucker some more subscribers because no matter whether you know who P.A. Trucker is or not, actually, you have to give P.A. Trucker a great deal of respect in as far as what he does for a living and how he risks his life doing such. So let's get, it's the last, all right, so let's cut this out. Let's go here. Let's go PA Trucker. So PA Trucker is a man who trucks from Southern California to all of the East Coast. And he trucks any, mostly from what I've seen recently, he's trucked watermelons, fruits and vegetables, and other types of supplies. I'm, I'm copying your information now, P.A. Trucker. So let's take a look. P.A. Trucker is also, oh, he don't like this fella here. Not one bit. And neither do a lot of other people. Because this fella apparently has fraudulently stated some really egregious things about P.A. Trucker. Now, I don't know why he did that, but it's the most disgusting thing that you could call another man. And this fella here has called P.A. Trucker the P word with no proof. Okay, now, for a long time, he said he was going to provide proof, but he never did. So with no proof to call P.A. Trucker the P-word, he has no right to do that. So let's go get, let's just get this posted. Minnesota are just, is one of the states. So let's say subscribe now, sub Subscribe now to Real Man Channel.
And then we'll put a space here. Yeah, he does, Scott. Subscribe now to A. Let's get this up. So, PA Trucker, now, not a lot of us on YouTube are real men. Not a lot. But PA Trucker is a real man. So, we're going to get that posted there. And then we're going into my details of my page. And that's going to supersede Popeye's notes. We're going to get that right. And that's where it's going to stay, PA Trucker. It's going to stay at the top of the comment page in the comments when I post it on the page after this video is live. So PA Trucker has been seriously defamed by this fella who I nicknamed the Mantis. Because when with his glasses off, his face looks like a praying mantis. I'm proud of that name. So let's see what else PA Trucker. PA Trucker has a video sitting in Murph's Murph Murfreesboro, Tennessee, with his 18-wheel truck to get loaded, loaded almost to Virginia state line. Short show on what meds that he may or may not take. Let's go to videos. So this is PA Trucker's rig or what his rig looks like. Let's take a look at that. And uh, he drives an 18-wheeler. Let's see if we can get a picture of an 18-wheeler in here. Okay, so what you see here on your screen is what is known as a rig, an 18-wheel rig. And this will either come with a box like this. See that black part of that box? This would mean this is called a reefer truck or refrigerated truck. And it has fruits or vegetables or perishables in this truck. The cab left, maybe to get gas, maybe to have dinner, maybe visit a relative. But this is what PA truck is rig looks like. And he may or may not have a reefer truck attached to his rig. So this is a very dangerous job. This rig with a reefer truck full of watermelons or, or vegetables could weigh 75,000 pounds, 32 tons. And that's a very dangerous job. I, I actually drove one of these trucks one time backwards about 350 feet because the fella that drove my truck and, uh, Mrs. Oles O-W-L-S Mrs. Oles job was a bulkhead job with 80 feet of bulkhead so I had 80 feet of 3 by 10 sheets, or about 120 sheets, 3 by 10 by 14 feet long. Then I had 250 feet of whaler, 8 by 10 whaler, all pressure treated, all wet. And then I had for 80 feet, that's pole every 15, 15 poles about 18 feet long. And the, the truck was a tractor trailer truck with no boom boom arm on the truck none at all that means that the load had to be tied off and then the truck moved forward with the load tied off 
and there was nothing to tie it off except my barge that was up against the bulkhead. So, and, and on the truck were a couple of rollers. Okay, so, but the truck was a hundred feet from the water where the, where the, where the, where the bulkhead material, where the bulkhead materials had to be delivered. So there was two choices. The guy was going to drop by going in reverse and hitting the brakes and pull the material off the truck by jerking it off the truck. And then, then I would have 20 tons of material in the street 100 feet away. Or drive the truck over the sidewalk and over the existing driveway and the curb. And I said to the driver, just back it up. Just back it up over the, the curb. Okay, I'm going to go check on that now. So I said to the... Uh, Driver, just back it up over the curb. One, give me one second here. Okay, I'm... All right. Okay. I got that. Thank you for the information. I got it. I got it. I could work with you against that little fella. I could do that. All right. Well, after the show, after the show, I'll, I'll give you a call personally give you a call not a problem thank you so um so the truck now the truck weighed now this was mark uh pa truckers rig his name is mark pa truckers rig had a maximum gross weight of seventy five thousand pounds without a a special overweight tag but Port Lumba had a construction tag. I had about 20 tons of material on the truck. So not only did the truck, was the truck about 10 tons overweight, because the truck itself weighs 40,000 pounds with the trailer, so that's 20 tons, and then there was 20 more tons. That's 40 tons. That's 80,000 pounds. That's overweight. But the truck had poles for the bulkhead and for the dock system that was going to be built. And the dock system poles were 40, 40 44 foot poles like that. So the poles extended over the back of the truck by 25 feet. So now I had an overweight truck with an overextended special construction delivery tag that refused to go over the curb because the curb is going to disappear. It's going to sink down into the ground. The sidewalk is going to get turned into dust. The driveway is going to disappear for the first 50 feet of the driveway. And the guy, oh, and there was a white picket fence on top of everything else. And the guy said to me, he goes, I'm not backing that truck in. I says, I'll back it in. He goes, did you ever drive an 18-wheeler before? I said, no. But how hard can it be? I've driven boat trailers with 40-foot boats on them. He said, well, okay. Now, this is the first time I ever drove an 18-wheeler, and... It wasn't the last. The next time was when I took my CDL license, uh, when I prepped for my CDL license in Florida, in, in Key Largo. So I took that truck, 
I tried to back it in. I missed the driveway by 40 feet the first time. Because I'm working off of mirrors, and the guy is standing in the yard like a statue. He, he don't want no part of this. So I said, yo, dude, I was going to take out the entire fence. And that's not where I wanted to go in. I wanted to go into the driveway part. So I said, yo, dude, how far up do I got to go? He goes, go up another 60 feet, another 60 feet forward. Then start to cut your wheel. I said, well, you want to guide me through this a little bit? So he stood on the, on the passenger side of the truck and he told me to turn and I turned. And the first thing that I hit was about eight feet before the driveway, I hit the curb. The curb just, you heard the curb snap. So the curb snapped and went down straight in to the ground flush with the street. The curb was 80 years old anyway. Then the driveway pad and the sidewalk were about 80 years old as well. And it was only two inches thick with a rock, a, a round P rock base. Then that, then that, now I didn't feel that at all, but I felt the curb snap. Then the rock, the P rock with the two inches of cement, the guy is, the guy's going, he's giving me, you know, he's giving me the come on back. And he's watching it. He would, even he would have had trouble making this turn without help. I would have guided him in. I'm good at guiding people, but I never drove a truck before. I was like 30, 33 years old. It was my first job with my first barge. The next thing that disappeared was the five foot of sidewalk and the, the apron from the sidewalk to the street. That turned into rubble. Then cut it hard then I cut it hard to go straight back, more straight back, because otherwise I would have ran over Mrs. Ohl's garden. She had a beautiful flower garden and vegetable garden. She had two, two lots, her house and another lot. I cut it really hard, went down the driveway, got that truck in, and then he made me cut it the other way. And I cut it the other way, and then it went past the garage. It just went past the garage by about two feet until I got the 44-foot pilings over the water and over my barge. So then we shut the truck off, and I, I snatched the six pilings for the dock with the one sticking over the barge, over the tractor trail of the most. I grabbed those, all six with with the number one wire. I snatched them off the truck. We released the slings, the, the tie downs. I snatched them off of the truck. Then I put the two wire on. So I had the one wire on the first six feet of the, of the load. And then I put the two wire on the last 15 feet. And then I picked it up and I swung it over the water and put it in the water and then Mikey, my low water man, Mikey and Johnny Mack, they went down and tied it up to the bulkhead. Now I have the bulkhead poles, I guess for 80 feet, one every six feet, I guess there was 15 of those because I had corners too. So I, I snatch what I could of those 15. What I couldn't snatch I snatched what I could and I put those in the water. But before we put them in the water, we, we snatched them with a sling and we nailed the sling off to hold the poles in place. What I couldn't snatch are the poles. We just rolled the poles off the, off the, off the, off the truck into the dirt, into the grass of Mrs. Ohl's backyard. Then, they were off the tractor trailer, and then I snatched the front of the sheathing and the wells. 
I put the, the boom down the crane, put the one wire and the two wire on the front of the load. And then I put a strain on the load and the truck driver went forward. You got to remember, on the bed of the truck are pipes that stick out above the deck of the truck about one inch high. The truck is made with rollers about every three feet to roll the load off. So we got the load to roll off the truck, but now the truck is 40 feet forward. So we he came back and we made another pick and I grabbed, once again, I grabbed the front of the load when the truck came all the way back. This way the sheathing is gonna fall right down up against the bulkhead line, the water line and the bulkhead line. And then of course I got out of the crane. So for you, for those of you who say, I never had a crane, I never had a barge. One day I'm gonna make you say that to my face. You're not gonna, you're not gonna deny me that right to say that to my face. You're not gonna do it. You won't be in the position to do so. I will actually ask you, I will ask you to say it. Please say that to my face and you will do that because you're a nice guy, right? You're the nicest guy you know, right? You'll do that. It's going to happen. So, the uh, for those of you who say Fazio never owned a barge, nobody ever wagered me any money that I didn't own a barge and a crane. No one ever wagered me that I didn't have the licenses to own a barge and a crane. No one ever wagered that I have a captain's license. No one ever wagered me anything. You people are a bunch of fraudulent, worthless low-class, low-level bloggers. Just like the guy who called Mark the P-word. Just like that guy. Okay, in the beginning, years ago, he said he was going to provide proof. But he never did. Therefore, he's a liar for calling uh, P.A. Trucker the P-word. You're not allowed to do that. That's against the rules. So, is was he? Did he lie about that? Did he lie about borrowing money? Same guy, the Mantis. Did he lie? All right, I'm going to go back to the comments. and say that PA trucker walks around totally naked underneath his clothes. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome, Mark. No problem. To, I will help you in any way I can. LOL to DNC. So that was my first time. And now, did I ever ride a, an 18-wheeler again? I did. Mr. Mitchell from Mitchell Septic Tank. He's the one that gave me three years experience in excavation and signed my excavation tag so I could take the excavation test. Even though I had uh, a landscaping bobcat, okay, but I did not have a backhoe service, landscaping, excavation, tree removal, deforestation tag. Mr. Mitchell, he was a black dude, Mitchell Septic Tank in Key Largo at 101, mile marker 101. Um, he's the one who signed off my tag. So he let me use his truck on his property to practice for my CDL test. But then I said to myself, I passed the seven stamps on the CDL. I didn't have to pass nuclear or chemical, but I passed nuclear chemical, um, has, and all the hazmat tests, I think there were four, biological, nuclear, and chemical. And uh, I passed, air, you have to pass air brake, air, there's seven tags, air brakes, double 
Okay, air brakes plus driving the rig, the 18-wheeler, in forward and reverse. That's the second tag. That, that's just your CDL license. The third tag is doubles, where you put two trailers on the back of the cab. So we did that. Now, on the, the, on the written test, you have to show which way the, the truck is going to end up if you're going in rear. And then there's triples. So there's air brakes, hazmat, biological, nuclear, doubles, and triples. I remember because I got averaged a 90 on the seven tags. I forgot what the seventh tag was. But air brakes is one of them. How I bet you the that most of these trolls don't even know how air brakes work. I bet big money, without them having being able to Google it, I bet if we asked somebody and offered them $500, how do air brakes work? Right now, you say it right now, this second, they're going to get it wrong. The PA trucker and Scott are going to touch bases. I got those messages. 101 Hibiscus Drive, Key Largo, Florida. Wow, they're still in business. That would be Mikey, would be uh, the oldest son. That's right, 101 well, it was mile marker 101, exactly. Combination and tanker, right. Okay, tanker, right. Combinations and tankers. So I passed the written on, on those seven tags, and then I was practicing for my CDL with Mr. Mitchell's equipment because he had a water tank, and he also had a septic pump tank, which would have allowed me to take all seven tags, but that the license was, the license fee was, was it wasn't that much, but $250, I think, to take the test. Plus, you had to bring the truck to the test site. So I would have had to hire Mr. Mitchell or Michael to bring the equipment to the site to test the truck. And then that would have cost me another nickel. And I just said, you know what, I, I don't need that. I'll just settle with my commercial driver's license, which was up to 15,000 pounds and six wheels. And then I had the permit passed for the tags, but I never used it. So do I lie about this stuff? <laughs> I have the test somewhere. I got, in fact, I got, you people are so, you know, that's the problem with you people. You really are mentally, your, your mental acuity is next to Zippo. Okay, so you read the book, and then you reread the book, and then reread the book, and then you take the test. Now, 90% of what was on the test I already knew because I know how air brakes work. I know about chemical precautions. I know about grounding fuel trucks to the ground before you, you, you attach the fuel nozzles. I know all of that stuff because I'm an A&P mechanic, airframe and power plant mechanic. But So you read the book. Inside the book is everything that you need to know. So I told the guy, let me have the book. I read the book in the library next door to the testing center where you do the written test. And I says, okay. He goes, did you read the book? I said, yeah. Just once? I said, no, I, I had that book home from years ago. Same book. And you want to take the test. If you take the test, you can't take the test for another 30 days. Says, let me have the test. So he gives me the first test, I think I got 100. I think. I don't know. I got a 90 for sure. So 
he looks at me, because I did it in about three minutes. I says, okay, I'm going to take the, the tags now. And he gives me one of the tag tests, and I might have taken two or three minutes to do the test. It's only 20 questions. So now he calls the, whatever the boss is, whatever, how could you be a boss in the department of motor vehicle? He calls that guy up to the front and said, this guy just got 100 or 90 on two tests in a row. Can you stand out here and watch him take the test? Now, I had a tank top on like this. As a matter of fact, it was probably one of these shirts. I have no, the guy looked at my arms. He looked at my pen. I said, what are you looking for? He goes, we're looking for a cheat sheet. I said, take your shit. And give me a pencil. Give me one of your pencils. And he did. And I took the third test, the fourth test, the fifth test, the sixth test, and the seventh test. All in under two or three minutes for each test. The whole thing took me 45 minutes. I was the only person ever in the history of that motor vehicle office to pass all seven tags in a row. Ever. Nobody ever did it before. And I did it in under an hour because my memory retention for what I didn't know is superb. And most of it I knew as second nature as an A&P jet mechanic. But you people, not a one of you, maybe Mark, could pass those seven tags with reading that book that day and not having read it for a few months before. Not one of you could do that. I guarantee you that. Okay, I will do that. I will watch the video. Well, I took that test back in the year 2001. That's right. DNC says I know about air brakes because I had air brakes on the Dragon, the Barge Dragon. That was that's what they were, two air brakes and a 66-inch wheel thrown in reverse at full speed ahead into reverse. Let's not take that dock out with us. So let's go back to my notes, which I took about the Mantis and, and also his girlfriend. Now, I don't think, I don't think it's fair to abuse Shah, but we have a creepy little blogger. You are one of the lowest forms of life on YouTube. To, to leave at 10 o'clock last night, there were six comments on Shah's live stream. Now, Shah's trying to help the Mantis, okay? Personally, I tried to help the Mantis. Everybody tried to help the Mantis. He didn't want our help. But now he still has one person still trying to help him. I will not, I refuse to say anything negative about Shah. Because if she wants to help him, that's her prerogative. But she's also an innocent in this whole thing. No matter what the creep says about Shah, she may truly love the guy. Who's to say? She may really love this guy, the Mantis. So if that's her prerogative, that's her prerogative. But the creep came on her show last night and said the most horrible, egregious things to hurt her feelings. Personally, I hope she takes him to the authorities. To the, but, but she can't because the creep knows that without the face attached to the comments, they mean nothing. So one of the comments was, why are you with him he won't live long enough to get out of jail. Does she, does she need that kind of comment? No, she don't need that. 
You're just an evil, malicious, angry man that you go after yet another woman in the Philippines. Another one. Again, this is the second or third time you attacked her with comments. You're just an angry little blogger. That's all you ever were. That's all you'll ever be. You're never, ever going to get the chance to excel in anything that you think that you may have done. There's no proof of anything you've ever said that you did. None, none whatsoever. There's, oh, God, I have pictures somewhere. No, I have pictures somewhere and videos that I dug up to prove what I have done. You have stories about pictures somewhere of the things that you did, but they're in a box. Well, I got to tell you something. I have a box of pictures that I know where the box is, and when the time comes, I'll go get the box. It's not that hard. But you have a fictitious box that you've had in the Philippines for two years, and you've never shown anybody a single picture of anything that you supposedly did. And that's okay. It just shows that you've not done those things. Or you don't have pictures of those things that you did and that was your forte in life, documenting stuff. And you didn't document the greatest highlights of your life. I did. And you're jealous of the fact that I have all these cool videos and that's why you flag every video every time, every time I make an upload. Which brings me to the point that the person who has been flagging my channel, after I made a video of the person that flags my channel, 20 minutes later my video upload was flagged. I put in a request, and now let me show you, because you don't seem to get it. I didn't break any rules. So let's go over here and I'll show you the person who flagged my video that said somebody's flagging my videos. That was in the title. So I said somebody is flagging my videos and that person flagged the video of the video I said someone was flagging about 12 or 13 minutes after I loaded the video, this video here was flagged. See this video here? To the bloggers, no names mentioned, flagging my last 55 live streams. 55 live streams were flagged. All have been cleared to monetize. Nice try, but no cigar. So this video right here, the green, the green uh, arrow here, this video here was yellow yesterday morning and then at noon, it changed to green. And this video is the Philippines flag of flagged in record time, my video. And I put in a request. And over here, it says this video is being reviewed. You asked for a review yesterday afternoon on the 28th. And it will be reviewed and it will be returned to green. So the flag of flagging, let the flagger flag. So the flagger who was flagging the videos has spent 10 or 11 minutes flagging 55 videos or 700 midi videos, 700 minutes or 12 or 13 or 14 hours. He spent 12 or 13 or 14 hours flagging videos, all of which are all green now, all of them, except for two. And those two I didn't monetize. Because those two, 
I was singing the Rolling Stones songs, and that's copyright. You have nothing to do with your tiny little existence in this world but to go around and cause other people aggravation, agony, and, and anguish and angst. That's all your life has amounted to. Your life has amounted to next to nothing, even compared to most other people. You have no accolades, none at all, none. Ah, one. Long, long time ago. One accolade. One. And it's not that much to begin with. It's not like you had 50 people working for you and you paid a 50 roll payroll. You had 50 people waiting for their payroll on Friday. It's not like you had to shell out 15, 12, 17 thousand dollars on Friday afternoon in checks or cash. You never did anything like that. That's an accomplishment. You never owned a barge or a crane service. That's an accomplishment. You never owned a truck, a 16-foot box truck for construction. You never had a construction license. You never had any licenses. You never had a commercial driver's license. You never did anything. I did this. Look at me. I had 22 people working for me at different times of my life. 22 people expected to get paid on Friday afternoon. 22 people got paid on Friday afternoon. That's an accomplishment. You, on the other hand, nothing. Zero. Zilch. And for 16 years, you disappeared off the grid. We want to know why and what you were doing for 16 years. No videos, no pictures. No job descriptions, nothing. What did you do for 16 years? To who did you do it with? To whom did you do what to? We want to know. Inquiring minds want to know what you did for 16 years. Your life just ceased to exist. Social media, pictures, videos, Hiking experiences, dogs that you may or may not have owned, cars that you may or may not have. Your life for 16 years draws a blank. It's like the dark ages of you two. What did you do and to whom did you do it with? Inquiring minds want to know. If we speculated based on where you uh, you hailed from, the speculation would be bad. I wouldn't even go there. It would be a bad, bad series of speculations. I won't even allow people to do that on my channel. So that you spent 55 flag videos, so you spent 700 minutes, minutes flagging my video, so you devoted 12 hours to flag my videos, and so they all came back green. What did you accomplish? Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, your goal is, of course, to find enough fault with my videos to lose my monetization. Just like you were so proud of that you've done to other people's channels. One day, one day, one of those people, like Roberto, who already made it perfectly clear he wants to come and see you, one day maybe Roberto will come and see you. But you know what? I doubt it. I think Roberto's all talk, no action. It'll be the person that doesn't say they're going to come and see you that may go and see you. It'll be that person. Probably won't be Roberto. Because Roberto had the opportunity once before, said he was going to do something, and then didn't do it. I doubt Roberto has the nits to do what he said he was going to do. So, Roberto is nothing more than a baloney and cheese artist in oh so many ways. 
plus the fact that he likes the Giga Ego. And the Giga Ego is a piece of absolute perfect dung, donkey dung, donkey dung. That's what he is. A liar, a fraud, a deceiver, a manipulator, and a man who runs a 34-woman harem that claims he never had a harem, and he passes his old lady around like candy at a church festival. That's true. According to his own blogs, and I have them all, he also offered Roberto a piece of the action, and he offered Nico a piece of the action, and they jumped on it as if it was... The winning lotto ticket, they jumped on his offer to share amongst friends. And the both of them said, well, if that's the case, I'm going to be on the next plane to the Philippines. Give me a damn break. Who would want it at that point? Scott Del Fuego likens having somebody's woman after they have been had by the owner of the woman like a piece of bubblegum. How many of you people would walk onto a bus and see a piece of bubblegum stuck to the back of the seat in front of you and then take the bubblegum off the seat and start chewing it? That's Scott Del Fuego's analogy as to having somebody else's wife, woman, girlfriend, or concubine. Who's going to take that piece of bubble gum off the back of the seat on the next bus you get on and start chewing it? I like that analogy. I told him I was going to use it, and I did. Let's go back to my comments. The one person that wouldn't take the Giga Ego guy's offer would be the fraud. Pennsylvania Trucker is back and Flying Circus is in the house. PA Trucker says, the video I sent you, the little man calls it my karma. He did. I saw that just a few hours ago. I call it my big payday for my injuries. Well, I wish you luck with that. But, uh, oh, and he was making fun of your injuries. But would he do that to your face? That's the big question. He will not. He will not. If he can't control the narrative or the situation he's in, even lying to the authorities that somebody said they were going to his island. No one ever said that. And he never did answer me. The video doesn't lie. Well, I'm sure you have video because they have something called cab. Cab videos where the video would be the front of the cab, the port and starboard side of the cab. And also there's a four-way with the back of the, the reefer truck, you can have a video at the top. There's, yeah, there are, I think it's called Cab, Cab Videos, Inc., or CabVideo.com, where you could get three-way, four-way, five-way, six-way mirror, mirror videos of what's going on in the car. If you have those videos, good for you. Cam videos. I have two dash cam videos in my truck. Yep. My truck. Yeah. I saw those. Uh, my friend has one of those. One Lonely Farmer, Wes. Uh, Wes has the four-way. four, four way, uh, Wes is putting, excuse me, the four-way cam. He's putting it on the... The part that fills up the hopper, the arm of the hopper, the front and both sides of the cab so he could see what's going on 
and if anybody is on the side of the cab, because the machine is so high and so far away from the the mulching mechanism, he he got he's just buying a four way. I saw it just yesterday. Scott Del Fuego one. One. I don't know what one means. Well, I, I, I didn't follow your videos about your injuries, but I if you were injured, I hope it works out well for you. Now, we're going to go back uh, to the comments. So, yeah, the, the tiny blogger was abusing Barry's girlfriend, Shaw, and I don't believe she should be abused. I don't believe it. I would never do it. But that's what he, he preys on weak people. He preys on the innocent and the weak, the women of YouTube. He preys on those. One day somebody will probably catch up with him. And, 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 and where he comes up with some of these stories, oh, my God. Where, where in this world, where in any video posted in the last three weeks or a month or two months, where in any video did anyone say they were going to where he lived to give the local police thumb drives? Where, show me where it says that in any video. Show it to me. Show it to me in words. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And your paranoia, for whatever reason, whatever somebody sent you, as far as your freaking trolls are concerned, your paranoia made you get dressed and go gallivanting around your town asking people, did somebody come and talk about me? Because you're a paranoid individual, and well you should be, and well you should be. For the fact that you bothered Shah again last night, do you realize that the story goes that Shah has brothers and sisters, and one of them is a barangay captain? Now, will that guy go and see you? Maybe, maybe not. Will you face him? No, you will not. You couldn't even face off with the mantis because you don't have the nits my mother was born with. You never did. You never had them. You're never going to get them, and you never will have them. My mother had bigger nits than you will ever hope to have. That's true. Somebody said they knew where I took my vacation and who I took my vacation with. How could you know that? What I did on my vacation. In fact, you still don't know what I did on my vacation. And you will never know what I did on my vacation. Because I won't post it, but I do have videos posted. Not uploads, not live streams, because there was no internet, but uploads on that day. So, that you make up stories, that's what you are. You are the fraud. You're the, you're the, you're the fraud of YouTube. You are fraudulent in everything you say and do. So one day... Maybe Shah's brothers will come and see you or visit you. One day, maybe Roberto will grow a pair of balls and he'll go do what he said he was going to do. Maybe, maybe not. I doubt it. Maybe one day Barry will be free and he'll have 
carte blanche to go visit you and discuss it with you personally. No one knows. No one knows you like they know you. You've been abusing people. Maybe we haven't heard from... Uh, Who haven't we heard from? Ah, uh, Flywoods. Flywoods is out of sight, out of mind. Maybe Flywoods is on his way to see you. You don't know. You don't know. And all the threats that you... Go ahead. You keep telling Flywoods that you're going to go after him. And the Barry, we're not done with you, Barry. And this person didn't go to the police. No one ever said anybody was going to any police on your island. No one ever said it. It's all in your mind. It's your paranoid delusions that made you believe that someone was going to your island, as you call it, to your local authorities. No one ever said that they were going anywhere, ever. Never happened. It's your paranoid delusional. You sit there and eat it up. You go ahead, you keep letting it eat at you. You're just an angry man. You've not accomplished anything worthwhile publishing or showing. You have no accolades, pictures, videos, licenses, vacation, nothing, zero. Nothing in 30 years, nothing. It's like you didn't do anything for 30 years. Nothing at all. There are people watching right now that I just got messages from that worked with you, that hate you. They hated you when they worked with you and they hated you all throughout the aftermath and they watch your videos and they say, he'll never change. He's always been like this. He's always been like this, always with the stories. Always with, I didn't do that. I didn't say that. I never said that. I'm an innocent. I'm a victim. You've been a victim since the day you were born. That's your life. You've been victimized by everybody and everyone every day. How did Ruby Galaris victimize you? How did Flywoods victimize you? Roberto, piece of garbage that he is. He victimized you. He made you back down. But you said, I'm going to get... You're not going to do anything to Roberto. But he did jam you up. He did jam you up on several occasions. And he definitely did threaten you. There's no doubt about that. It's on video, right? But so you were a victim. I, I never said anything about Roberto's wife. I never said anything about Flywoods' wife. I never said anything about Daisy May. I never said anything about Ruby Galars. I never said anything about Shah. I never said anything about Dimples. I never said anything to any Filipina. And if I did, I'm sorry. One day that's going to fly out the window. I never made up a story. I never lied about being married. I never lied about where I was. I never lied about anything. And then, well, I was caught. I have to admit. But I had a reason to lie. Fact is that you lied. What your reason was is immaterial. Fact is you've been caught in a lie. Show me where I lied. Show me where I lied. Did I have plans to build a hotel? Yep. Did I have an architect and approved plan? Yes, I did. Do I have a captain's light? Of course I do. Did I own a yacht? Yes, in fact, I did. Did I own a Cobra? Mustang? Ragtop? Yes, I did. Did I own a million-dollar house in Key Largo? Yes, I did. Did I own a barge with a crane on it? Yes, I did. Did I own a land crane? Yes, I did. Do I have pictures and videos and 
physical proof of all of the above? Yes, I do. What do you have proof of? Nothing. You just run your mouth. It runs off track. I didn't lie. I didn't lie. I didn't lie. Well, I got caught in a lie, but I had a reason to lie. Still, you lied. For what purpose? Because you never have an accolade. You don't have any accolades, so you have to back it up with bologna and cheese. You're a fraud. You've always been a fraud. You're always going to be a fraud. And nothing's going to change. Never going to change. Did it again. You did it again last week. You stated that you had proof that somebody performed a sexual act with another blogger. And you want Super Chat in order to discuss the sexual act and who the person was that performed the sexual act and who the person that got the live show. None of that's true. None of it's true. But you said it. One day you may have to repeat it in person to the person that you made up the story about. You should think about that. What would make me be able to have to repeat something? Think about that. Well, a prosecutor, maybe. Maybe not. But you one day will have to repeat those words. And you made it up in order to garnish Super Chat. Because that's the kind of less than a man that you are. And you are a lot less than a man, in my opinion. Okay, so let's go back to the comments. As for the man that says he don't wear a black hat, big ups to that man. He only mentioned Super Chat 44 times today. I don't know where that comment came from. Uh, that's a comment that that looks like it was hidden. Okay. Now, as for Shah, that you stated Shah was helping a criminal. No, she's not. Barry hasn't been convicted of a crime. Therefore, he's not a criminal. He may one day be a criminal. But right now, he's not a criminal, but you make up those stories. Shaw is not aiding and abetting a criminal. You did chastise her by saying that Barry would not live long enough to get out of jail. I saw the comment. You made up a story that Barry owes the family money. You don't know that. So this is just another example of you chastising. Look, let's face it. Shah probably does love the guy. And Shah, love is blind. And you are sitting there with six comments in, in a few minutes chastising her to dump Barry. Barry won't live long enough for you to get it. Can you wait 10 years? What's wrong with you? Live your life. Why? You were the only person that commented on the whole entire video she made besides one other person saying nice video. All of your six comments were all negative and in fact borderline evil because that's what you thrive on, hurting other people's feelings. One day, some piece of garbage like Roberta will grow a pair of nets and go see you. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a show. I'm going to give you 
a diet update, which I don't know that you could say it now, but uh, if you remember, when I started uh, my diet, this board here, that board here, my belly was over here, almost touching the vertical board. Now I lean up against the back and I could put my hand without touching anything up and down. So we lost this much belly fat. So what it, what it amounted to was uh, 45, I went to the city yesterday to buy some groceries. What it amounted to was 45 pounds of belly fat in 40, 48 days yesterday. Today's 49. Tomorrow we're going to start a different diet plan. And uh, I will upgrade you on that. The name of the video will be uh, Diet Results After 50 Days and the new diet plan. So look forward to that. I will go back to the comments and then I'm going to end this live stream. And you'll flag it. The flag, the person who does the flagging will of course flag this video moments after, moments after I finish this video it will be flagged and moments after that I will request a review and in anywhere from 15 minutes to, to a few hours, it will turn back to be green. That heart, oh, the heart is blocking you too, huh? I don't know how to get rid of that heart. I thought it was just me. Pennsylvania trucker says Shah is a victim, just like the rest of his ex-girlfriends. She is. I agree, Pennsylvania trucker. She is a victim. I, I agree. But, but there is one blogger who constantly abuses women. She's a victim. I, I agree with you. All right, I agree with you. But... The one guy that is constantly harassing, haranguing, and chastising women has done it to every woman. If he knew who your woman was, he would do it to yours as well. It's just his nature to be mad and angry at the world. DNC, always with the truth. Let's see what he has to say. Plain, let's turn this around. What happened to my... Oh, here it is over here. You have to... Okay, hold on. Ah, that was wrong. Okay, sometimes when I do that, I'll get it back. Okay. Scott says, you have to move up the chat to see the comments because the heart blocks the comments. That's true. That's been... I, I thought it was just me, but apparently it's everybody. DNC says, plain and simple, he is a coward. He'll never confront anyone face to face. He will never take a swing. He hides in his safe space and attacks like a beach, B-E-A-C-H. He, he calls it his, he calls his, he calls it his man cave, but he has no man cave, man cave stuff. This, that is one concise and accurate statement by DNC's 
human circus, says Scott Del Fuego. That's true. So yeah, he will never. He if he couldn't, if he couldn't confront Barry and came up with six different reasons, and each day for about two weeks it was a different reason. One was, I was gonna do it, but my girlfriend stopped me. I would have done it, but there were cameras. Even though I said I would do it. When I saw him, I didn't do it because he was with some guy named Brian. Brian, he brought Brian for protection, but I had no protection. I did not have Fazio Zataka at my side. I did not have 20 other people in the restaurant holding me back. I did not have protection. I would have, but he had his hand in his pocket. At that point, you pick up a chair. I would have, but he had a glass in his hand. At that point, you pick up a stool. He's never, ever, 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 ever going to have the nits my mother was born with. That's true. He is consistent in that everyone highlighted in capital bold letters that experienced him hates him. What a way to go through life. I could go on, I could, I could play videos from years gone by about things that were said about him, but I won't. But some of the stuff that was said about him with possibly being a racist, I can't prove it, so I can't say it's true. We can't get that person in court, but or, or possibly being a bigot. No, nope. can't prove it. So I don't post that stuff. But I do have videos to things like that, but I can't prove it because no one's in the Philippines and no one can go to court and 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 testify with proof that those things exist. So I don't post it as opposed to that crap he posted last week that he knows of a blogger that performed Skype sex to another blogger. You know what would happen if you said that to somebody's face? What would be left of you if you actually said that to somebody's face? He, of course he knows it. That's why he hides behind his skirt. The skirt, that's why he hides behind the skirt. DNC says he's consistent in that everyone that experienced him, experienced is a good word, everyone that has knows about him, understands him, has experienced his nature, hates him. What a way to go through life. If you are watching the video, hit a thumbs up, please. I don't care about that. I'm going to hit my own thumbs up. 15 thumbs up. Thanks, Scott. It's the least you could do. Reward the entertainer. PA Trucker says, I think you're losing weight too fast. You are not the only person, PA Trucker. Scott and I talked about that three days ago. Scott wants me to uh, put a hiatus on my diet, and that's what tomorrow's show is going to be about. Because autophagy, which is what consumes the, the bad cells in your body, 
after a period of time, autophagy slows down or stops. Uh, I've been reading about it the last two days. So Scott says that I need to start eating for about a few days, go back on a regular diet once a day. And um, I did buy the groceries yesterday for that. I'll talk about that uh, update in my diet plan tomorrow. Ex you need to, I walk quite a bit, uh, not so much exercise, but I walk probably more than most people with a 15 pound pack, just for the hell of it. Kirby Smart says, those are elite results, Michael Fazio. Winners fight and win, quitters quit. You are a winner, man. Keep up the hard work going and that winning mindset. Go dogs. Thank you, Kirby. Uh, yeah, I, I lost, uh, well, a little bit more than 45 pounds in 49 days, but three days in a row, I was completely stagnant. We had rain here and rain where I was in Cebu for three days, three days of rain. What a time to pick to go on vacation. Scott, <laughs> Ed, Edward John Lippett just got here. Must be talking about the prophylactic. Yes, indeed. And probably the only man on YouTube that criticizes a Vietnam War veteran. And I'm glad that Popeye put that segment in his show yesterday. Where uh, Popeye gave you, played that Jim Morrison song about being a Vietnam veteran. And of course, thank you for your service. So anybody that lived during the Vietnam era and would disgrace a veteran is just a sick, 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 demented piece of garbage. And that I got to give you the biggest kudos possible because for many reasons, but all of the people that I know that came home from Vietnam begged the rest of us that didn't go to cut off their thumb or their big toe before we would go to Vietnam if we got drafted. That was etched in my mind forever that people coming back from Vietnam were begging us to, to maim ourselves or to move to Canada before going to Vietnam because of the atrocities that occurred in Vietnam. So by Ed going through it, that in of itself, whatever position or role Ed Lippitt played in Vietnam, he is a Vietnam veteran and the fact that that low-life piece of garbage would put him down for being a veteran and state that's why we don't want to hear about what guns you were in charge of or anything like that. That's because he, Ed Lippitt, this is, he has never, ever, ever, ever been in charge of anything. He wouldn't know what it's like to take a position of authority. He has always been a follower. He's never been in charge of anything. Never had a job where he was the boss. Never had a truck where he had to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and change the oil to start up his truck to go deliver. He never has a single accomplishment. In that, you went through Vietnam... He should have never tried to disgrace a Vietnam veteran or any other veteran, in my opinion. I've never done it. Nobody can say I ever did it, and I never will. So 
that piece of garbage in that all in of it by itself and the fact that he disgraces Popeye service as well, that's just not allowed. No normal person would do it. And he is not normal. In fact, I should go get that section of Popeye's video. Let's find that section of Popeye's video. Because Popeye did give us permission. Here it is right here at 17 minutes and 56 seconds. Let's go here. Let's play it. All right, here we go. But that someone's got to go over there, and that someone isn't me. Ed Lippett. When you were in cahoots with a neo-Nazi, skinhead, whatever you want to call him. How would you like that in your head? Would you like that? Yeah. And it's legal. This is the end. This is the end, my only friend, the end, oh, my dear with a neo-Nazi, skinhead, whatever you want to call him. How would you like that in your head? Would you like that? Imagine, imagine what you want to do with that thing. Moron had it backwards, of course. Yeah. And it's legal. This is the end. This is the end, my only friend, the end, oh, my dear love and love's the end, of oh, everything that stands the end, no safety, no surprise. Yeah, Popeye put together the best video I ever seen in my life with all his clips and all of his uh, music inserts and he also in case you guys are wondering he also gave everybody permission to uh, post repost the video I put it on my uh, on my community page right here I put it on the community page uh, I don't know where it is. Well, I put it on my community page and I'll repost it again. I'm not gonna upload it, but Popeye did give people permission to repost it. I'm not sure if that means uploading it or not, but um, I'm sure that Popeye will allow you to reload it, but I, I, I don't reload other people's videos. So thank you, Ed Lippett, for stopping by, and thanks for your service. I remember my friends that went to Vietnam. They came back different people. Yeah, it was been raining in uh, in another part of the Philippines nonstop killing. Thank you. You're welcome, Ed.
Scott, the Ballad of the Green Berets. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that's when you realize the, how crazy the uh, American politics, that was, for whatever reason, the denominator behind the Vietnam War was nothing more than uh, testing out their toys, but it destroyed millions of people's lives, and that was horrible. Okay, so let's, uh, I think Ed Lippett has a page. Let's get Ed Lippett's page up here. Ed Lippett grows hogs, watch on pigs, and um, he has no videos now, though. Okay. Okay, well, he's a hog farmer, him and his wife, and I do believe he has a baby. So he, he doesn't have any video. Lewis, Lewis Pagan Punch, thank you. That's amazing. Thank you, Lewis. That was, so this is, we're going to get Ed Lippett's channel up here. So you know it's the real Ed Lippett. Yeah, anybody, I, I could never, never understand. I, my understanding of the service when, when I was in high school and had to make a decision to either enlist into the Air Force or wait a week. I waited a week un, until the draft. I got drafted. And I was in the first batch. F was like the first lotto of 1,000. And I went to the guidance counselor and he said, wait a few weeks. They might kill the draft. So I had one week left to sign up for the Air Force. And that week, that Sunday night of the week, I would have had to sign up because I was already a jet mechanic, I would have gone into the Air Force, not gone in as a foot soldier. And that, that Sunday night, after the Who concert, they killed the draft at 10 o'clock at night. And I, I didn't, then I went to the draft board and I withdrew my name from the enlisted role. But I would not have had to go to Vietnam as a soldier, infantry, marine, or anything like that, I was guaranteed a mechanic spot somewhere in the Air Force. It could have been in Vietnam, could have been in South Dakota, could have been in New York, could have been in Puerto Rico. At the time, we had a base in Puerto Rico, but I would not have had to go to fight, and nor did I want to. Louis Pagan Ponce, we got a pot. Let's get Ed Lippett's name in here. And sad to say Ed took down his videos. Unless you have another channel. Let's get Vietnam veteran Ed Lippett. And we're going to post that as little or as much as that means. We're going to post it here. And made, let's, let's add some words there. Made fun of by a creep. on YouTube. And if you want to do more research on that, be my guest.
I forgot. Okay, that's pretty sad. That's pretty low. And that just, this is a shout out to the creep that made fun of both Popeye and Ed Lippin. Not real sure, Ed. That was, I was 17 years old in 1973. It was, uh, in my senior year, and I'm not sure where they, they would not give me a place. They only assured me that I wouldn't be in the infantry. That was the only assurance that I got from that. You would know more about that than me. I'm trying to find a page with all the information on it. And this is all going to be in the comments section of the video that I make. Now, let's just talk about how somebody can lie. You see this picture here? I love Santa Fe, Bantayan Island. That's a picture from a year ago that somebody got so paranoid they ran around their island to see if I was on the island. Never said that I was going there. Never said I was going any place on the island. Never said I was even going to the island. But the paranoia kicked in. That man lives in a constant state of paranoia. Imagine walking into the authority. Did, did this guy come in? Did this, he said, did this guy come in and say anything about me? You paranoid little man you are. Boy, oh boy. When you did it to me, when you sent letters and information and videos to the barangay captain where I live, did I bitch about it? No, I never said a word because I don't care. Nothing that you have to say is truthful honest or above board. No one believed you then, no one believes you now. But you're going to get the opportunity to say that to somebody's face, what you say to them one day. And I'm going to bet big money that you're not going to do it. Because you don't have the nits my mother was born with. That's true. You're a coward, and when that time comes, and that time is coming, it's going to be live streamed, because where you will be will be public knowledge in a public venue. That's true. Let's go back up to the videotape. Lewis Pagenpont says, My father-in-law was a vet. A great man, husband and father. Balls of steel and loved this country. He was exposed to Agent Orange and it affected his whole life. He, he ever said, he, 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 he ever said that in front of me about any veteran. If he ever said that in front of me about a, any veteran, slap city knuckle sandwich. So, yeah, that's like an unspoken rule. Now, I, I, no one has, no one has ever come forward and shown a video where I've talked about a veteran, any veteran. The man who attacked me from behind 
was a veteran, but I never attacked his service. Uh, my father was a paratrooper in the 101st Screaming Eagles. Never heard my father talk bad about the service. He loved the service. Um, I don't know anybody that's ever talked bad about another veteran, whether they were a veteran or not. I don't know anybody except the creep, and he did that. Lewis had a father-in-law who was a veteran in Vietnam. He was exposed to Agent Orange, which is a defoliage chemical, defoliation chemical, weed killing chemical. It acts on a genetic level, it enters into the cell membrane. It works through the cell membrane by osmosis and destroys certain cells. It was used as a defoliation agent to deforest Vietnam so that you could see the enemy. They sprayed it on the enemy. They sprayed it on the soldiers, all of them. They cared not what happened to the soldiers because they were experimenting, experimenting with young soldiers' lives. If you'll remember, they did it again in Desert Storm. They did it in Desert Storm. They gave soldiers special suits that had a chemical reducing agent in the suits, except the agent that fought off chemical warfare was only good for 48 hours. After that, any chemical warfare would not be protected by the suits. They knew this then, they know it now. You won't hear about it then or now. They used our soldiers like guinea pigs. Guinea pigs is what the soldiers are. Guinea pigs is what the soldiers were. No one ever knew why we were in Vietnam. We're not bordered with Vietnam. Vietnam had nothing of any use to us that we couldn't get through fair trade agreements. The purpose of Vietnam was simply this. They were experimenting with thermal imaging. They were experimenting with laser technologies. They were experimenting with the planium, re the planium, the planium, Uranium depleted shells. Let's see how much penetration we get with DU shells. And when the shell hit the enemy's tank, it blew up like a starburst inside. 
and sprayed depleted uranium in the air. And if 1,000 degrees of flash didn't kill the enemy, they breathed in depleted uranium dust. Just like in Faluga, where they sprayed a town day and night for month after month, in Fallujah with the plenium rated shells, the plenium uranium depleted shells. Everyone in Fallujah became contaminated. 70% of all children that were born in Fallujah were born with birth defects. Some had three arms, some had two heads, some had 12 fingers, but 70% of all the children in Fallujah was Scrooge from the depleted uranium bullet. That was just one town that became world renowned. It was to test out the pladium, depleted uranium bullets. Fallujah, the great recent experiment proved that depleted uranium bullets have seven inches of armor piercing, or at least four. But when they explode and you breathe in the flash dust, you're guaranteed to go to an early grave of dust. Vietnam, Fallujah, Iraq, Afghanistan, all the same. An experiment with the youth to destroy the youth and turn us into a brown USA. That's all truth. Fallujah, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Pac- uh, uh, Iran, some of the greatest people in the world, and now Ukraine. Ukraine, anybody that knows about the Ukraine war understands the Ukraine war was initiated by Ukraine back in 2013 in a town called Donbass. Donbass. Let's get that video up on here to prove that what I just said is true. Well, it'll prove from a certain blogger named Jimmy Dawes um, pr- perspective Jimmy Daw Jimmy Jimmy Daw just was allowed to address the United Nations how is that for stepping up in the world and he talked about Fallujah uh, he talked about Ukraine and he talked about He got 12 minutes to talk to the United Nations just yesterday. Jimmy Dore addresses the United Nations Security Council (coughs) on the fraudulent, what Jimmy Dore calls fraudulent media. And let's get that... uh, Let's get that up here. I, I don't want to post. I want to post the video. I don't want to post the soundtrack. I don't know if it's copyrighted. So let's get Jimmy Dore addresses the UN Security Council, the full 12 minute video and the link. You guys want to see a video. The only video that you're ever going to see on YouTube 
this week about the truth about how Ukraine, Jimmy Dore says Ukraine is getting slayed. Slayed. And, uh, in Ukraine. For every nine soldiers that Ukraine loses, Russia loses one. For every thousand square meters, or for every hundred square kilometers that Russia gains, Ukraine gains one square kilometer. 600,000 Ukrainians have died And another 300,000, said Jimmy, in another show, have been injured. And we've sent them now $200 billion. $200 billion. And they're getting their butt handed to them. So Ed Lippett once again said, if I went in, you might have went to Thailand. Most fighters were flown out of there. Ed I don't remember much about that time in history. I'll take your word for it. All of my teachers were World War II and Korean War veterans. And all of them, I remember in shop, all my shop teachers were veterans. They said, if you don't have to go to Vietnam, don't go because they knew that Vietnam was not World War II and they knew the horrors of the Korean War. And they said, anything to get you out of war, anything. And that's true, but they did not tell me where I would have gone. Scott Del Fuego says, I worked in a weld shop with a guy that was in the Air Force in Thailand during the war. Fazio, who is a man, Scott, well, then that proves Ed Lippett knows the truth, that's for sure. Fazio is a man who can be hard to be around, as many intense and intelligent men are, as his beliefs are firm and his passion is strong. Does not make him a bad person, but rather worth hearing. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, like I I spoke my piece in the beginning of this show. I will not allow somebody to lie and call me a troll when it was him that was lying. I won't, I refuse. It makes no difference for all the people that I said I would meet. If they still want to meet, well, then that's possible, I guess. But if they want to know where to go when they get to Bahal, I'll spend a half an hour and write up an itinerary. Where to go first, what there is to do, what there is that's worth doing, and the costs of all those items. I have no problem giving them the information. But to meet most of them that swore an alliance to the the Giga Ego, I, I don't want to meet any of those people. It's okay. It's and and in fact If those people want to send me, if they want to come and pick up their shirts, they can do that. I'll still give them their shirts if they want the on time back or not go, go, bobo sister. Because that piece of crap has been donating to the fraud's channel for months now. Five dollars, ten dollars, a dollar, two dollars every day. Go, go, bobo sister, you're a piece of crap, plain and simple, for giving him money. And all you're doing is egging on the drama. You're a piece of crap. I'm backing out of giving you your shirts. I don't care what you've done in the past. You support a fraud, a liar, a creep that talks about veterans. You're not getting anything. Of course, there's no need because you'll never show up here anyway. But if you do, you're not getting a shirt. You're not going to say, I I came, I got the shirt, and I left. That ain't going to happen. I don't even want to see you or most of those people. That's okay. So I said my piece in this video where I just posted the link. Jimmy Dore actually, let's go here. Let's open this up. 
Jimmy Dore actually addresses the UN Council at the UN Council and talks about the horrendous lives and how many people actually died. At This is the UN Council, at the UN Secretary Council. This is the full video. This is Jimmy Dore talking at the council, and he is the only person and his partner that's to his left, you don't see him, that has actually spoken about Donbass and the 2013 where the Ukrainians started the war with Russia and decided to become affiliated with NATO. The whole war in Ukraine is about Ukraine deciding to enter into relationship with NATO. Russia does not want that because NATO is encroaching on their borders to, to make it simple. And by Ukraine becoming a member of NATO is a large portion of Russian's borders, but also a large population of Russians in Ukraine that would be separated by who they swore an alliance to. Now there's a reason that Ukraine is not a member of NATO right now. They wanted to become a member of NATO two year, uh, seven or eight, nine years back, but they didn't become a member. Now they can't become a member now because no actively participating country in a war with another country can become a member of NATO until that war is resolved. So Ukraine wants to become a member of NATO in 2013. Jimmy Dore talks about it. But they never became a member. And now they want NATO to supply them with weapons to fight Russia. And that may or may not be happening. I don't know that. But they cannot become a member state of nation, a member nation state of NATO, because they are actively in a war with Russia. If the war ended tomorrow, then they could ask for membership into NATO. And Russia doesn't want that. And when the United States, according to Jimmy Dore, says that Ukraine is wearing Russia down by attrition. That's not true. That's not true. Russia, Russia, Russia is a nuclear power and they have the second largest arsenal after China or the biggest. They might be bigger than China, but Russia is not being worn down by NATO or $200 billion. Russia could wipe out Ukraine and I don't know why Russia is pro prolonging the agony, but I believe from what I've read about Russian forces that Russia could wipe out Ukraine and let's say Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin, by the way, of all the people in this world, if I had to choose a different father, like besides the father that I had, which, which was a great father, if, of all the people in this world, I would choose Vladimir Putin as my second choice. I, I, I love that guy so much. That guy is so cool, man. He's got tigers. He drives, he drives trucks. He's a judo expert. He was a a, an MI6 secret agent. He runs the country. 
He takes care of business. I, I love Vladimir Putin. So if, if all the people, if I had to choose a second person to be my dad, it would be Putin. I don't care what he did. It makes no difference to me. To me, he's a great man. He also is totally against this woke crap that, that's destroying the American youth. He's also totally against he allows people to be gay, but he does not allow all those gay pride parades, and he doesn't allow people to break into his uh, Congress and harass the people in the Senate or whatever they have. And he, well, I like that. I like that. I think Vladimir Putin would make a great president, way better than Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a freaking piece of garbage as far as I'm concerned. Every time you got to hear Donald Trump, you got to hear the great state of Israel, our friends in Israel, our friends in Israel. It's because of Israel that we're in Ukraine up to $200 billion because those people own the American war machine. It's because of Israel that the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate is voting for war. Because they're getting paid off. I think that Vladimir Putin would straighten out the world. Plus that other guy whose name we won't mention. It's a damn shame I can go back in time and guide some of these world leaders which direction to go in. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. Focus on one thing at a time. It's a damn shame I couldn't go back in time and help some of these people to, to reach their goals. Because now, knowing what the future holds, to go back and to have their ear, oof, the world would be different, that's for sure. That's for sure. So, Vladimir Putin would be my second choice to be it over any of my uncles or over any of my teachers or any of the men. He is such a cool dude, man. I think he's just a real, he plays, he's, he's, a, he's an archer. He plays judo, teaches judo. He can, he, can, he can fly any jet that he wants or fly in any fighter. Or, he can do anything he wants in the world. Trump don't do that kind of stuff. Trump is not a man's man like Vladimir Putin is. I think Vladimir Putin is the coolest guy on earth. Besides my dad. My dad is number one. But he's a, he runs a close second to my dad. Vladimir Putin. I think, I think Trump is garbage. I don't know who's better than Trump. Probably that Indian fellow, Ramash Gamani, Mani, Wana, Wana. That guy would make a better president than Trump because Trump is an Israel first. Who needs Israel and all these proxy wars that they promote? Who needs that stuff? I don't. But and Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore in that uh, in that dissertation is clear as day that America has 800 military bases all around the world, and we don't have a single threat at our border. And, and the fact that America supports 15, uh, 800 military bases around the world and we've never had a threat on our soil. And we're supporting 800 military bases when most other countries have one or two. We are... We are the world's, we are the world's, um, I don't know what you call it, warmongering. We are the most warmongering nation in the world. And, you, and, these, and the, the press and the media and the politicians, they all go along with it. Jimmy Dore explained in another video how much money we spend. Forty-something percent of the budget goes to war. $200 billion is not enough. Unaccounted money. Unaccounted money.
no accountability for the money. We are actually paying Ukraine's teachers and their politicians. So in other words, if there's a college professor in Ukraine, right now we're paying that salary. If there's an English teacher in high school or grammar school, we're paying his salary or her salary. If there's a congressman or the equivalent senator in Ukraine, we're paying their salary. In order to keep their country working, just working, not up and running, but just alive and working, we're paying the salaries of all of their politicians and all of their school teachers and all of their grammar school teachers, all of their doctors and nurses in hospitals that would have been closed because of war, we pay their salary for them to go to work every day and maintain open hospitals and schools and colleges and Cong their idea of Congress. Why? We didn't, we weren't threatened by Russia. And, and at the end of the day, just yesterday I learned that BlackRock and I think Grumman International have signed a contract for $400 billion to rebuild the infrastructure of Ukraine. And you want to know why? That they want war? Because the more war, the more infrastructure that has to be built. The $400 billion, the $400 billion deal by BlackRock, I'll, I'll get it up on the boards right now. Okay, $400 billion. Where is that money coming from? It's not coming from Ukraine. It's coming out of the pockets of the American people. Watch this. I'll put it on the board. You people are insane if you think any of this makes sense. Where's my video? Where's my video? I can't find my video. Let me read the comments. I can't read the comments either. Hold on a minute. I got to put a little spittle on my glasses. That was a lot of spittle. God, they'll be clean now. They'll be clean both sides. Enough spittle to do both sides freely. Scott says none of NATO wants to pay. It's share of the freight either. They all push it onto the U.S. corrupt military industrial complex. Whores. When Russia tried to put missiles in Cuba, we almost went to nuclear war. Yet we think making a hugely corrupt state of Ukraine a NATO member is okay. It's a shell game to make billions. Oh, can't open that page either. I'm losing my ability to see what's on YouTube. Okay, uh, let's, let's go to, let's go back to channel content. Let's go to live streams. Let's go to my live stream. Let's go to the video. Okay, see all the work I had to do? I do this because I enjoy showing you people the ignorance level. Hey, Jim Alver, thanks for stopping by. Like a rainbow. Jim Alver, one minute. Uh, 
That's true. When Russia wanted to put missiles in Cuba, we almost we were only hours, days, or minutes away from a nuclear war or a possible nuclear war with Russia. Four hundred billion by BlackRock. B L A C K Rock. I just read this yesterday. Uh, Black Rock. Not Black Rock. Black Rock, moron. To, to rebuild, R-E-B-U-I-L, Ukraine. U K R A I. N E. I think I spelled that right. Not a lot of people could spell that right. Okay, here we are. Zelensky and BlackRock announce new investment initiative. So let's get this up. What is the $400 billion contract to rebuild Ukraine? All right, we can put this into the comments. Ukraine established a program to attract attract up to 400 billion in foreign investment to target various areas of the economy, from clean energy to defense to natural resources. Zelensky believes this is the greatest opportunity in Europe since World War II. That's crazy. That's insane stuff. That's insanity. I'm not even making a joke out of this. That's insane. Oh, that's the wrong video. Okay, that's not it. Boy, oh boy, do I get confused. Here it is right here. Okay, well, let's get this uh, information. Look at that guy, he's sideways. Why is the life, that's the wrong video again. No, it's the right video. Okay, so how do I get the live chat? What happened to my video? Let's close that out. It's public. Why can't I get the video in the chat up there? Who turned off the chat? I didn't turn it off. I don't know what's going on here. I can see the chat. All right, well, I'll have to post that in the video details on the Jimmy Daw with the link. No, that's Jimmy Daw. We don't want that. We want this. Copy that. Go to Popeye. Ah, here it is. Okay, right here. Live chat. Yep, it's 311 characters. All right, so let's get that. That's, we're gonna shut that off. We don't want that. Let's go back to the channel content. Wow. Let's go to the live streams. Let's go to the, now it's this not supposed to be that. Let's refresh the page. It's supposed to have all the information I put in there already in there, but now that's gone. All right. This YouTube is not working properly. It's just not working properly.
Maybe. I don't know. Hold on. I'm I'm doing something here that is uh, totally odd, even for me. I can't find. I can't find. <sighs> That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Okay, Popeye Live, all right? That, this is the right one. Wow. YouTube, Google, they are messing with the stuff. The, the video that I'm looking for, I'm gonna restart, I'm gonna have to restart the computer. I literally am gonna have to restart the computer because I cannot get to the channel content. Here it is, here. Let's go to channel content. Let's go to my live stream. Let's go to my live stream. I can't get that. I cannot get the, I'm gonna restart the computer. That's gonna take three minutes. I can't get to the page that I saved all the links for Ed Lippet, the live stream, Popeye's video, the timestamps, I cannot get to that page. It won't show it to me. This has happened before. This is not, YouTube and Google are changing. Even I copy the link for the 400 billion, it shows me Jimmy Dawes link. Even I did, I copied Jimmy Dawes link. I know I did because I watched me do it. And I copied it and then I posted it and it went to Jimmy Dawes link even though I was posting the 400 billion dollar link. This computer, this program, Google, YouTube, I don't know which one it is, is, is not updating itself as it should. Like if I press, if I press cut the link, if I cut the link, which is what I did, and then I paste the link, the link I cut that disappeared and cut should go right into the video, right into where I pasted. it. So I, I copied the link and I posted the link of the Russian 400 billion, uh, of the BlackRock 400 billion and Jimmy Dawes link from 10 minutes ago posted. It's not supposed to do that. If you copy the link and it highlights and copies, So I've been saying this for weeks, weeks and weeks. Now, I did notice that my video went to yellow. That's my fault. That's not the flagger's fault. Because I talked about the Ukraine war. It, the algorithm, the artificial intelligence flagged the video. So that one, I'll just request a review and they may or may not give it to me, but they'll keep it at yellow. They'll still be monetized, monetizable on YouTube Red. But because, okay, so here's what, while we're waiting for the screen, see the screen? See the screen behind me? Behind you? See the screen? While we're waiting for the screen, let me tell you what's going on. YouTube, as I said, is changing everything about YouTube, everything. It's changing what you can say, who you can say it to, how you can say it, and what you can put. So you're, let's say you talk about a medical miracle, and you leave it at that. You might get away with that as a monetizable video, if you're a blogger. If you're a corporation, 
or you could say whatever you want. But as a blogger, you might get away with saying the words medical miracle. However, what you are no longer allowed to do is talk about medical miracle, how it happened, what miracle happened, the types of uh, soda that made the, it was a medical miracle. He drank Pepsi-Cola, and it's a miracle. You're not allowed to talk about the types of soda or various things that made the miracle occur. You could say that guy is the result of a medical miracle, but you can't say what caused the medical miracle. Ever again, gone from YouTube is your ability to post what they call medical disinformation. Anything that goes against the American Medical Association's definition, anything at all, is not allowed to be spoken about. So if you know that drinking orange soda is more beneficial than eating oysters. You're not allowed to say it. Because it doesn't say that in the American Medical Association. But if you know of that oysters are better than no oysters, you're not allowed to say that either. Because it doesn't say that in the medical journal. It might say that pill, I don't know the name of the pill. Um, there's a pill that makes things happen. Um, whatever that pill is, whatever that pill is. If it says that pill works, you're allowed to say that pill works. But if you say oysters, replace that pill with oysters, can't monetize your video. Even if oysters did work, they don't work. It's all fake, but I mean, even if oysters did work, if it doesn't say it in Amer AMA, the Amer American Medical Association's handbook, you can't say the words. So you could say the words, but you can't monetize the video. So the same way I just talked about, probably Black Rock was the trigger. I don't know what the trigger was, but I'm going to request a review. Could be the other guy, the little guy making flag in the video, but I, I don't think so because, I mean, maybe, if it, we'll find out. I'm going to request a review right now. I think I'm going to request a review, so I'm not even going to wait. Let's go back to the channel content. It looks like all my channel content disappeared, actually. It looks like everything I wrote in this video for the entire day is gone. It is. It's all gone. Every link of every page of every comment about Shah, about Popeye, everything is gone. And when I refresh the page, it doesn't come back. That's interesting. Here it is right here. Everything in this video, all those links, all those words, all Ed Lippett, Popeye, the timestamps, PA Trucker's video link, his channel link, Ed Lippett's channel link, Popeye's channel link, it's all gone. Every bit of it. It just disappeared. And I did not make the mistake to save a video that had no no description in it. My description box was full for the last three hours. It was completely full. 
with information. So I did not save changes with nothing in the description box. Look, if I put even one letter over here, it goes to save. Say, I'm going to undo the changes. The words are going to disappear. I did not make that mistake because I know it will save nothing. Now I'm pissed. Now I got to go back into my video and read the description in the video of what I had written. Scott Del Fuego. And I can do that by simply doing this. I can simply go back and show myself what I wrote in the description box right here this is the description box I'll just enlarge that when I'm done and I'll go back and get the, the, the programs that I this is a pain in the neck YouTube this is a pain in the neck YouTube Scott Del Fuego, like a rainbow, the little man, he knows no bounds when it comes to causing frowns on innocent women. He likes to abuse innocent women. But when it comes to standing tall like a man, that is something that he cannot do. He says that he's a real go-getter. But he is a fretter of things that can happen to you. He says Barry's time is coming. He's not done with Barry or Shaw. But would he say that to Barry? The answer is not. When it comes to standing in front of another blogger and running his spiel, he'd much rather get on a set of wheels and run like the Gibbons. He'll run and run and run away, but will he win? Will he win when he talked about not yelling at authority and not raising his voice? He lied about that and admitted it happened. Yeah, I raised my voice, but I had a good reason to do so. But remember Michael Fazio, he said did the same thing, but he had no proof of that. It was only another person's word, but he doesn't have to prove anything, but one day he will, he will be in Bogo. front of the judge and they will ask him did you say this and did you say that and he will have to answer to the authorities Zelensky oh yeah so it it's also been proven that Ukraine 
and this goes back 10 years ago, Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries in the world, according to YouTube. Ukraine outlawed every opposition. Oh, here we go. Ukraine, here we go. This is true. This is true. Ukraine outlawed every opposition party that gets any traction. Biden, the filthy left dream of doing that. Biden and the filthy left dream of doing that. No wonder they love the Ukrainian bagman so much. Matthew Brooks, I have no idea what you are. I hope that you have stuff on your channel or you're going to be made to dis disappear, disappear. You are history. All right, well, look at, we, he didn't say anything bad, so let's, uh, we'll let him stay. But D, 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 D. This kind of crap, Matthew, that'll get you blocked next time. Yep, that's what I'm going to have to do. Go review all that stuff I put in there. What a pain in the neck. Well, I could put, uh, I could put this. And I could put the link to this. Uh, this looks like a PDF. It's hard to copy PDFs. Some copy and some don't. Okay, let's get that into the description box. Look at this. Look at this. All the descriptions came back. All of them. In the description box, just like I had them. It's a miracle, I tell you. I was talking about orange soda, and it's a miracle. All the all the description came back. All right, let's uh, let's go with that. That's why I did not save. What I had posted before, remember I posted a couple of words of something and I didn't save it because it might have saved only those five or six words. And then this stuff would have never come back. See, see it took, okay, I refreshed. Look, I, I press save before save it. Now before I saved it, just like I did now, the line went across the top and it saved everything. And I saved it and it disappeared. But I did not resave it with nothing in the in the chat box. Now all the words that I had put in regards to the internet in Cebu proper. And using data in Cebu over my birthday weekend was not available. That's true. So the only way to get internet in Cebu was to go to a restaurant that had hard wire and cable or Wi-Fi. Now, I can't even get cable or Wi-Fi in ICM Mall. They are having trouble. Last week, I made a video about 7-Eleven saying that only 7-Eleven and only, only the hard wire in 7-Eleven that went to either Manila or Cebu had cable. So am I lying about not having internet? I'm not. Now, if a person has in their roof, maybe they have Wi-Fi. I didn't have a big antenna. I had a cell phone and I had no reception when I went to Cebu. Okay, is that true? 
I'm telling you it's true. I don't need to prove it's true. Can I call up Smart or Globe and say, can you give me proof that you did not have reception in this area on this day? They don't keep track of stuff like that. They don't even keep track when they don't give you internet service for 10 days. They refuse to give you a credit. Because first of all, you don't have internet service on the first of the month, right? And you call them up and tell you that, tell them you don't have internet service. They say, sir, document what days you don't have internet service. And then when you get your service back on, Tell us and we'll reimburse you. So you document eight days there was no internet service. And you you can't do it on the phone and you can't do it in a letter. You have to bring yourself to the Globe outlet because I have Globe Internet. And when you go there, they say, yes, sir, we're going to give you credit for eight days. It will show up on your bill, but not this bill. It'll take 90 days. The credit will take 90 days to show up on your bill. So you wait 90 days and you forget about it, and there goes your credit. Or you remember that 90 days are up and you ask them about your credit, and they say, sir, you've waited too long. You should have gotten the credit when you got your internet turned back on. It's a, it's a giant circle jerk. Globe. They've never given me a minute's credit. I've paid them for seven years. Never missed a payment. Never got turned off. Never had a late fee. And they've, they've probably not given us six months of internet service. Well, during Cyclone Odette, we didn't have internet for 40 days. That we got reimbursed for because nobody had internet. So they didn't charge us for internet for those 40 days. But every time they're off for a day or three days or five days, you can forget that. Just eat it. It tastes really good. Back to the comments. I can't believe that my comments are all back. One more stupid comment, Matthew Brooks. And I'm going to make you disappear, like my globe internet disappears. You've been warned. I'm glad I didn't miss you lose all of that stuff. And, and we're going to... All right. Well, we're pretty much done anyway. I wonder what brought it back. I wonder how that happened. Now, you remember, I refreshed the page... Refresh the page and refresh the page. It didn't come back. I shut the page off. Opened the page back up. It didn't come back. I shut the computer off. Opened it up and it still wasn't there. And then I waited 10 minutes and it just showed up when I went back to the page. That's not normal. Now, how's that happened before? Yes, it did. It happened before. It happened with a video I made on my birthday. I made a video on my birthday at a particular restaurant. The internet shut off 30 seconds into the video. Then when I went and looked for the video, the video was not there. There was no video. And then the next day, the title of the video showed up. And the day I made the video, September 25th the name of the restaurant, and a picture of the front of the restaurant, but no video. So it took 24 hours for the video I made to appear, but there was no video. It was just the title, the portrait, the restaurant I was standing in front of, and the timestamp. That's true. YouTube, Google, changing everything. You know what I haven't done? I haven't changed my... Look at this. I have water. I, I, have, I have not drank water in two hours. I feel thirsty. How thirsty am I? I'm bubblicious thirsty.
Wow. My stomach shrunk so much from not eating for 45 days. That little bit of water, which was right up to here, it wasn't a full liter, filled me up. My stomach feels like I'm all bloated out now. Today is day 49. It's questionable what day I started, the 12th or the 13th. That would make it 48. I weighed myself the day before on day 47. I lost 45 pounds in 47 days. Oh, excuse me. I lost 45 pounds in 47 days. I lost 10 and a half inches plus off my waist, but, and this is the big butt, this is the big butt. I'll, I'll talk about this more tomorrow. FUBA, FUBA, I lost FUBA. FUBA is that extra band of fat above the belly button and below the belly button. In fact, FUBA is what keeps your pants on. When you lose the inches off your waist, the FUBA tire is what keeps your pants on. Well, I lost the FUBA and I almost lost my pants walking through the city the other day. Because the FUBA is now going away. So the waist is almost staying the same, but the FUBA, the FUBA is going away. So then the doctor explained to me that the FUBA will take the place of belly fat because at some point that's when you gain the weight is the way it comes off. And Scott knows what FUBA is, but I forget the word, what the word FUBA means. FUBA is a weird, it's a weird kind of, it's, it's below the belly button fat. It's like that tire that's below the belly button, above the komasikiyama and below the belly button. There's a band of FUBA. The FUBA went away and almost so did my pants yesterday when I was walking around in the city. That was strange. I'm going, wow. My pants, they're loose. They're very loose. They're too loose. And the, it must be the FUBA. Disappearance of the FUBA. Nobody wants to tell me the, what the FUBA is. Scott is the only one that knows the word. Anybody know what FUBA means? I, I forget. From under, no, FUBA, from under, it's something, it means something. Scott, Scott has gone to bed sleeping. I uh, will find out tomorrow what FUBA is. So we want to thank Ed Lippett more than anybody else for showing up today. And saying hello, thank you, Ed Lippett, Scott Del Fuego, Louis Pagan Ponce, and PA Trucker, both major contributors to the uh, to the super chat. Thank you. Flying Circus came in. DNC gave me information that I never never talked to DNC about who he watches and who he doesn't watch. My relationship with DNC is strictly friends. We don't have anything to do with each other with YouTube videos, although I've given DNC some ideas of what to do with certain videos. But DNC and I don't really have much to do. BJ Smith, FUBA. Yeah, what does FUBA mean, BJ? We could look it up. It, it ain't a good thing, though. I, I, and being that the video's already flagged, I got nothing to lose. Well, I know what FUBA is 
in that movie with uh, the guy who starred in Jaws, the helicopter movie. That I know what FUBA is. But there's another word for FUBA. That what it is in regards to fat. All right, let's look it up a little bit. Fuba meaning fat. Let's see, fat. F A T. Okay, let's take a look. It, there is. Fuba means effed up beyond all recognition. Yeah, I know that, but Scott had a better word. Okay, here, we're getting close. We're in the English dictionary now. No, that's not it. Man, this is wrong. Scott knows things that the dictionary doesn't know. Okay, what is... Wait, you know what we're going to do? What is... Let's do that. Let's go home. What is W-H-A-T is... Fuba. Maybe I'm spelling it wrong. Fat. What is Fuba fat? Okay, it's it's belly fat that's below the belly fat. The belly button. No, nah, we're not going to find it. I tried. I, I tried to give you. I gave it my best shot. All right, so we're not going to find that. We're going to have to wait for the Del Fuego. So PA Trucker was very generous today. Thank you. Let's see if we can see that. We can't see it. Okay. Lewis Pagan Ponce, also very generous today. Thank you. Lewis, I know that you're sleeping. We all talk in the morning. And, and Scott Del Fuego, like a rainbow, flashing colors on the screen. Fl Scott hit us with a green, like a rainbow. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages. We're going to talk about my new diet. I'm going to go on a different diet regimen for about, well, I spoke with my dietitian and, 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 and well, uh, my advisor for the snake diet. I, I spoke with the people on the, in regards to the snake diet, they agree that Scott Del Fuego said we should go back to normal food once a day for five days. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. That that hasn't been uh, cemented into a program yet. But it could be because when I... When I was in the city yesterday, I did not get tired, and I walked about oh, a mile and a quarter with a 15-pound pack. I bought one gallon of uh, vinegar, which is about eight pounds. I bought one liter of soy sauce, which is two more pounds. That's 10. I had one liter of water. That's 12. I had my day bag, that's probably two pounds with my the stuff I have in my bag, that's 14 pounds. Uh, oh, 
I had one kilo of calamansi. That's two more pounds. That's 16 pounds. And I bought a kilo of vegetables. That's 17, 18 pounds. And I do that before I walk around the city so that I have a pack, with fold up pack with, for just for the exercise, for the strength in my feet and legs. Now I got this other thing, BJ Smith, I'll show it to you. It's called Chinese. Well, it's not Chinese cabbage, though. Yeah, here it is. Well, now it's called Chinese cabbage right here. So I bought a two kilo, two ki this comes in kilos. Well, this was a two kilo piece. And uh, this stuff, it's like eating celery. So Chinese cabbage calories. I bought some of this. It's 12 calories for four ounces. Well, just shy of four ounces, 12 calories. So you could eat basically, if I wanted to eat this, you could eat four ounces. You could eat a pound of this and it would be 48 calories. It would be the same amount of calories as one calamansi. A pound of this stuff here. Here it is here. So you could eat a whole, you could eat two pounds of this and it would have less calories than two calamansi. I find it's almost like eating celery. Plus it would be good roughage. So I, I want to go to one more advisor. Scott is my main advisor. And then I have another advisor on two different places where my diet is being monitored and documented. I want to talk to them about going what they think about this. So in, if you have this stuff, again, it's, it's, it, the calories in this is 12 calories for four ounces. I find that pretty amazing. Yeah, right here. 12 calories. Right here. That's amazing. You, imagine, four ounces of sugar is like 500 calories. So this is, and this is a different, this is bok choy. This is about the same. So there is stuff that you could eat that gives you your green vegetable nutrients. And, and the, again, that guy, cottage cheese, I don't eat, I, I've eaten cottage cheese. I actually like cottage cheese, but I, I don't even know what, buying milk products in the Philippines, BJ Smith, if that, who was that guy who said that? Let me get over to that page now. BJ Smith, let me tell you something. Not to be rude, because you don't know, but eating dairy products in the Philippines, that ain't going to happen. I could go into it in depth, but yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you on the screen. Turn this around. Well, we'll look this up on the top there, cottage. C O T T A G E 
cottage cheese calories, let's just look. That's 98 calories per 100 grams. So that's, that's eight times the calories as the vegetable, eight times. But cottage cheese products, products, P R O D U C T S, Philippines. It's all. You have no idea. I, I should show you, actually. All right, so cottage cheese products, Philippines. Cottage cheese brands in the Philippines. Nothing in this package is real. Like, in America, I was working in a pizzeria. Cottage cheese was made... And it came by polio in uh, two pound, two two pound containers, those big yellow containers. Here, it's all chemicals. Every bit of this is a chemical. Is there cottage cheese in the Philippines? Let's take a look at that. But let's see, cottage cheese in the Philippines. If you read the ingredients on the side of the container, you'd have whey, soy, soybean oil. Um, you'd have everything but cottage cheese in on the label. Let's see, cottage cheese, Philippines. I would have to show you at the package, but... In, in the Philippines, B.J. Smith, let's say you wanted to buy real milk, impossible. Like we buy milk by the gallons, vitamin D. Remember you used to buy vit real milk? It's impossible to buy that here. You can buy containers, non-refrigerated containers of milk in a cardboard wax box. But you cannot buy fresh milk ingredients. Too east, that doesn't go. The cottage peas ingredients. No, you no. Know, this is how to make it. Store bought. You have to put store bought. S T O R. Store-bought cottage cheese, Philippines. Ingredients. No, they're not going to give it to you. Well, here's something that's close. Milk, question mark, whatever that means. 92% because you can't buy real milk here. So the question mark. Well, let's write, let's just copy that. And we'll put it in the chat. I'll put it right here. Okay, we'll put it right here. And then we'll get the link for that. Ah, you're dumb. I'm dumb. Okay. Oh, that's quite the link. Let's go back here. Okay. 
let's copy this. Well, that might just be the link. I'll put it in the description box here. I'm not going to start Googling blue cheese and cottage cheese. BJ Smith, throw $100 on the screen and then tell me, give me a list of the top five cheeses you want me to research. I'll charge you $20 per, okay? How's that sound? So in the Philippines, the cottage cheese is milk, question mark, 92%. Fresh cream, question mark. Milk solids, question mark. Salt. Preservative 202. Thickeners. XM gum. Locust bean gum. Processed urema. Seaweed. An acidity regulator. Citric acid. And it's $5.00 for it's five dollars for eight ounces eight times 28 is eight times eight is 64 it's five dollars for seven ounces and it's it don't taste like cottage cheese it don't look like cottage cheese certainly not cottage cheese and it's certainly not real milk. So, did you get a list of those five cheeses you want me to research? Set up your credit card there for me. Uh, and I'll do the blue cheese next. Are you ready? I'm waiting. $20 per cheese. You could give it to me 100 on the Super Chat. And I'll do five cheeses or... If you just want to know blue cheese in the Philippines, just throw $20 on the board. Look, you guys come here and you want, you want me to spend three hours on... I don't know that you're not even a troll. Let's go find out if you're a troll or not. Yeah, I sure hope you have something on your channel. Because if you don't, you'll never appear on my channel again. Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. You've been on YouTube for seven years and you don't have any videos. You don't have a playlist. You don't have my channel as one of your favorite channels. Why should I answer your questions? It used to be people went on YouTube, they went on my channel. They put down my channel as a as a, as a referred channel. You people don't even give me the satisfaction of that. BJ is a good way to... Uh, Big J is a good way to... Uh, okay, so you and I are done. You can leave all the comments you want for as long as you like and many days as you want. The last comment I will ever read from BJ Smith is... Blue cheese. Thanks for stopping by. Leave all the comments you want. Have fun. Ask other people the questions that you want answered. And hopefully they will do the research. You're not going to sit here and throw names and suggestions at me. And expect me to look it all up. Cheese is cheese, dude. Cheese is cheese. Cheese is one of the most fattening things that is possible. Now this stuff here, this Napa cabbage, Napa cabbage, that's what I remember the name to be. Napa cabbage. So if you go into the store and ask for Chinese pitch eye, they'll give you Napa cabbage. If you go into the store and ask for Chinese cabbage, they'll give you Chinese cabbage. But they may offer you bok choy. And this is bok choy. Bok choy is also a delicious, way better taste and product than Chinese cabbage. But it's a little more expensive. A lot more expensive. Probably twice the price. But it's better tasting. 
but it's small. It only comes in like five or six ounce pieces. Way better, a way better taste than vegetable. Way better. This is what they put in the stir fries. They put the Chinese cabbage in the stir fries too, but let's look up bok choy. I don't know the vegetable count in the bok choy. B, B, okay. Bok choy, calories. Per 100 grams. And what do we have? The other one was 12, and this one is the same. So it's the same amount of calories. It's in, it's in the same food category, but bok choy, yesterday the Chinese cabbage, pichoy, this stuff here, was 90 pesos per kilo, and the bok choy was uh, one, 140 per kilo, so it's 50% more. And when you add garlic and vegetables to the two of them, I mean garlic and uh, fish sauce or soy sauce, it's the same. I, the bok choy is better tasting, but for me, I haven't eaten anything in 47 days, okay? When I could eat this raw, I could eat the the core of this raw, and it would be like having filet mignon steak. So, there we have it. Up, oh, we went over. How far did we go over? 30 extra characters. So we'll just take Boy, this whole cave, cave agreement, uh, Zelensky and BlackRock, what, what a, every name in here. BlackRock, Kiev, uh, well, let's, let's remove this. Let me remove this. See the red line? That means I have 5,000, the red line. That means I have 5,000 characters in this. Oh, it'll disappear right now. Okay. Okay, we'll save that as it is. And um, how many people put 5,000 characters of information in that thing? We can't even get B.J. Smith to use me as a, as a recommended channel. I really don't have a lot of tolerance for people uh, did I recommend channels today? I recommended highly Popeye's channel, PA Trucker's channel, Ed Lippett's channel, Scott Del Fuego and Lewis always. And you can't even post a single video of mine in your recommended channels or recommended playlists. And you expect me to respond to all your comments? There's no reason that you should expect that and there's no reason for me to do it. Okay, you have an excuse here, okay. They blocked my channel. YouTube shut my channel down for not reasonable. All right, we gotta move up here. The heart is interfering with the words. For no reason, and my playlist is set to private. Well, okay. So you don't have a playlist. Still don't have a playlist. Was my name in the playlist? Absolutely not. I'm sure of that. So, so that you do have an excuse. I believe YouTube may have done that. But still, there's no recognition to Michael Fazio, his channel, 
There's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of video, 11,000 videos on my other channel, reduced to 2,800. 4,000 videos on this channel, reduced to 3,000. And still I don't have a heads up from anybody. That's okay. Okay, so, still, no matter your channel shut down, YouTube shut it down, I would be willing to bet large amounts of money that my name was not a recommended channel. You didn't have a single one of my videos on your channel. And still you use the excuse that YouTube shut it down. Because you can't put it on today. But was it ever on? No, probably not. Okay, we're done with that. Let's go back to my videos. Let's close this one down. We don't want that one. That was the one without anything. Monday Live with the Liar. Will Big E freely bear everything? The Liar lied for two hours. Two solid hours. Defamed me as a troll half a dozen times. Said he never said this and never said that. Okay. And we're going to have to... What happened to the video details? All right, see how this is working? One has video details and one does not. Don't understand it. Probably never will. Okay. Big J B.J. Smith. You know what I suggest, B.J. Smith? I suggest... You start another channel. It'll take all of about 12 minutes. Being that you're not subscribed to anybody, being that you don't go to anybody's channel except your subscription, where is your homepage? Look at your homepage, it's blank. You're not subscribed to anybody. Playlists, nothing. Channels, nothing. Being that you're not subscribed to anybody and you have five lousy subscribers, why don't you start another channel? What are you crying that YouTube shut your channel down? Just delete the channel. So you made the channel in 2016. So big deal. You made a channel in 2016. It's a totally worthless channel other than the fact that it's seven years old. Go make another channel. That's my suggestion. You guys are a trip, man. Okay. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh yeah. One more thing. One more thing. We got to go. One more thing. Okay. Uh, we want to open this up to another page. We're going to go to my live stream, my videos. And you're going to see that this channel got flagged already, this, this, this upload. Now, it got flagged when I started talking about the Ukraine war. The word war is a trigger. The word Ukraine is a trigger. The word American Medical Association, American Medical Association is a trigger. And not only that, but believe it or not, I requested a review. And I requested a review a half an hour ago and it came back as a green a green label. See, this video is being monetized. So it realized within seconds that there was nothing non-monetizable in the video. So when it was yellow an hour ago, when I requested a review, because I know I didn't say anything illegal, I may have said that orange soda causes the Komosikiyama to work better, but the algorithm may have picked up the American Medical Association or something else. So it went right back to green. And that's how all, all 55 
of my last 55 live streams. All of them were flagged by an angry man, and all of them came back to green. But two, two did not. Because I was, I sang a Rolling Stones copyrighted song, and in another one, I did something. I did something. I know what I did. It's going to get... I don't remember what I did. It was a five-hour live stream. Hard to remember. I'll, I'll find it, though. Well, now that one went back to... Okay. See this one here? Water fast only. This one here, four hours and 36 minutes. This one, I I was the one who, I never tried to request a review on this one. See, I could still request a review. I will not. Because in this one, I don't remember what I talked about. Could have been, could have been, uh, I, I think it was about diets, actually. But I mean, if 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 the if the if the the man who flags the videos wants to review my four hour and thirty six minute video, feel free, have at it, because I know it won't get. I know it won't get monetized, fully monetized, and I don't care. Oh, I know what that one was. That was the one I got. Over a hundred dollars in super chat, and I was singing. And the other one, where I was singing, I got three hundred dollars in super chat. That's what it was. And that one, I was singing, and I sang a song because of the super chat. And the other one, that's yellow, I was singing the stone song, and I got super chat. But if you give me three hundred dollars, I'll sing any song you want. I'll let that video go unmonetized. I'm a big, bigger man than worrying about. For three hundred dollars, what would I do for three hundred dollars? I would sing Black Sabbath War Pigs. For three hundred dollars, I would sing Sympathy for the Devil. I sing that really good. I'm really I'm a really good singer. For three hundred dollars I would sing Susie. The song Susie by Frank Zappa. Mothers of Invention. That's a weird song. That's a weird song. Susie, what would you do, Daddy? Susie, what would you do? If she were my daughter, I'd what would you do, Daddy? If she were my daughter, I'd, what would you do, Daddy? I'd smother her up in chocolate syrup. That song is on Frank Zappa album that came out in 1971, Mothers of Invention, where all 10 or 12 members of the band went like this. With their mustaches and their lips, they puckered up, and it looks like twelve, the back of twelve cats, all of them puckered up, and it all it looks like the back of a cat. It was the. Let me let me give you the album. I I I can show that to you. I can show you the album cover. Mothers of Invention. What a what a what a great time I had when I met Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa, man, hanging out with him behind the stage. That was so cool. Frank Zappa said to me, I asked him, do you think that you're crazy? It was 1977. I was with Charlene Pearson. Charlene Pearson. She was a beautiful Jewish girl that I met, that I dated for several years.
Charlene and I went to the mother's, the Frank Zappa albums. We got to look up albums. To the Frank Zappa concert. And at the end, it was at Madison Square Garden, I believe. At the end of the concert, we went to the door that the one of the many different stage doors that the musicians would come out of. Now, it wasn't Weasel's Rip My Flesh, and it was the inside of the album cover. Oh, man. It wasn't Freak Out. It wasn't Uncle Me. It could have been in the inside of Weasel's Rip My Flesh. Whoa, -ho, Jim Alva with, that, the, with the Jim Morrison song. Yeah. Um, Weasel's Rip My Flesh. Let's see. That was a great album, Weasel's Rip My Flesh, but you really had to be, you had to be, you had to really be into Frank Zappa. You had to really be, I don't see the, the album cover. It could have been the mothers in Fillmore, it wasn't the Fillmore. I had that album cover. It was one of the albums I brought to the Philippines I was not giving up my Zappa albums, my Pink Floyd albums, or my Beatle albums, and the weight of the container shifted and melted. It crushed all my albums. I only had about 12 albums. Okay, let's look up Frank Zappa, Mothers of Invention albums with... with... Um, Pucker, P-U-C-K-E-R-E-D, Lips, L-I-P-S. I never lie to you about this, but are they going to, it was the inside of the album, that's why we can't see it. Could have been Freak Out. Wow, he made a lot of albums. I only had about five. I think it was this one, The Mothers of Invention. Some guy turned me on to Frank Zappa with Weasels Rip My Flesh, this one here. And, and I went out and went to the record store and bought the Mothers of Invention, this one here, that album cover. And also I had one more. I think it was Freak Out, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I got to hang out with him. So Char Charlene Pearson and I, we, we were at the door at Madison Square Garden, and the musicians, I met Rick Wakeman and the, the whole band of Yes at the door on another, in another day, another year. Frank Zappa. Those are the only two that I remember offhand, but, but Frank Zappa, I remember specifically because we were outside the door and it was cold or raining or something. And they brought us back into the, behind the stage and we all partied for about 20 minutes. And I had a, I had a recorder. I had a, a Sony 555 recorder. I think it was a Sony 555. It was a, a miniature cassette recorder about this big, about an inch and a quarter big, about five inches square, like that. And I said, I'm going to interview you. And I asked him, 
at the end of the interview, after we were talking and hanging out, we were, we were partying. And uh, I asked him, do you, do a lot of people think you're crazy? Do you think you're crazy? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it was the first, I, I had silums, silums. You know the, the, the silum sticks? I had about two gross of those sticks. And I took one of those sticks and I was selling them at the concert. I was one of the first people to ever sell glow sticks at anywhere ever, period, in 1971 or 72. I was one of the first people to ever have silums. I used to sell them at the concerts. I'd put a ribbon, like a Christmas, just a cheap ribbon that you put around boxes, and I would sell them for a dollar a piece. I bought them by the gross for like 50 cents a piece. And I threw one of those on stage. If you ever see Frank Zappa in a video swinging a glow stick around, it was that night that was my glow stick at Madison Square Garden on stage with Frank Zappa. He swung it around. And when we met at the door, he had the glow stick on his person, on his chest, because it had a ribbon. And I had told them that those were my glow sticks and that I had sold out, but I had a few. And he said, oh, that's pretty cool. And he swung it around. So he, Frank Zappa swung my glow stick around at his concert on the stage at Madison Square Garden. Nobody else can ever say that Frank Zappa swung their glow stick around on stage. So I asked him, do you think that you're crazy? Because a lot of people think you're crazy. And he looked at me and said, Michael, you're a lot crazier than I'll ever be. Now, I don't know if he was kidding or not, but it was, I was going, wow, man, that's cool. And me and Charlene used to laugh about that. For years, we laughed about that. I, I dated that girl from high school into, into my, she, I put my boat in the water that I built in 1976. She was always out on my boat with me. 76, 77, that was my first apartment. 78, 79, 80, 81, until I moved to my house on the water in, on 95th Street. I was still dating Charlene going on seven, six, seven years. She was such a cool lady. She was ugly, too. I think that was the only girl I ever dated that was ugly. She wasn't ugly, ugly, but she wasn't pretty, pretty. But for me, she was beautiful because she had such a great part. Jewish, too. She was Jewish on top of everything else. She had such a great personality. She had a job. She had a car. I brought, we went to holidays at my house and her family's house. She taught me about the Jewish traditions of the, the different foods that the Jews eat during their holidays. Charlene Pearson, she was a cool lady. I often wonder what happened to some of the girls I dated. Charlene Pearson, never forget her. Never forget her. What a, anyway, her and I and Frank Zappa, we, we partied together, whatever that means. So Jim Alver is in the house. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and fame. That's the that's sympathy for the devil. Woohoo! That wasn't Jim Morrison. My mistake. I've been around for a long time, long, long time. Stole many, many a man's soul and faith. I thought it was many a man's soul and face. I've always been singing it as many a man's soul and face. F A C E. I was around when Jesus Christ had his moment of doubt and pain, made sure that Pilate washed his hands and sealed his faith. Many a man's. Pleased to meet you, hope you guess my name. But what's puzzling me, what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. Classic Stones, yeah. I used to sing that song 
with Carl Vela at the top of our lungs in his house or my house. My mother would jump up and down on the floor because my, my little, my, my man cave, I had a man cave in my mom's house since I was 12. But you could hear right up through the floor. It was a wooden house. Carl's house, on the other hand, his man cave, my man cave was right underneath where my mother sat to watch TV. So when me and Carl would start singing songs, me and Carl sang a lot. Carl was a really good friend as a, as a childhood friend. He was, me and him spent so much time together. But in Carl's house, Carl's parents party. So when we were singing, the father would come up and knock on the door and say, let me in, I want some. That's true. Mr. Vella was a trip, man. Let me in, I want some. <laughs> ah, that was so funny. Call, and, and Call's going, it's okay, my dad is cool. I'm going, how cool could your dad be, man? He's an old man, you know, he was 30. We were 15 or 14. No, no, he's cool, he's cool. So anyway, when Call sang, when we sang in Call's house, Call's room, was above the living room of Carl's parents' house. They had a big house. But nobody ever stayed in the living room. The living room was for company. They stayed in the family room in the back of the house, and you couldn't hear me and Carl singing from the back of the house to upstairs. But me and Carl used to sing a lot. We used to, the, Stone, the Rolling Stones, Jim Morrison, the Beatles, they let us play the music as loud as we wanted. The Vellas, they liked the music. They were, they were, they were partying people, the Vellas were. Not so much Mrs. Vella, but she understood. They were both beauticians. So they were cool, like they, they were like right up to date with all the trends and what people, the haircuts and the music that people listen to. They were really cool people. They used to let us fry marbles. My parents would never let me fry marbles. I don't know if you guys ever fried marbles, but me and Carl would fry marbles a uh, couple of times a year. And the, the, they had a gas stove, and we would fry them good, especially those big cat's eyes. Remember the cat's eyes? They were about an inch. And we would get them, get them boiling and throw them in ice water and crack them. Crack the marbles into a million little shards. And they would stay together. And then we would play marbles with the, with the fried marbles. And when, when you hit them, sometimes they'd hit the other marble and just shatter into a million pieces. You had to be there. I bet you there's nobody on right now that's watching this that fried marbles. Frying marbles, and they were, well, if you fried marbles, it means you had money to, to burn because you would take good marbles, and it would take you a long time to get a bag of marbles. And you'd put about 25 marbles in a, in a frying pan, and you'd boil water. And they, you know, you, and then you'd slowly boil the water, and when you got the water boiling really hot, and boiling where the marbles were boiling temperature inside, you would take the marbles and drain off the water, and then you take what what was left of the marbles and a little bit of water and put it in a bucket of ice, and the marbles would just go Shh, like that and crack into like a million tiny little pieces it would destroy the marbles if you threw the marble at a wall it would just turn into dust but then we would play marbles with our friends because we were big into playing marbles and you'd, you'd hit the marble sometimes it would blow apart and sometimes it wouldn't but either way they were they were bound for 
for the destructive nature of the the process itself. Frying marbles is not good for the chemical or the structure. Changes everything. Frying marbles. You got to be there. I bet you the little fella never fried any marbles. Probably never had enough marbles to fry. Frying marbles was a an extravagant thing to do. Not a lot of people could afford to fry marbles. You got you had to be there, but if you weren't there, then I can't explain it to you. But we used to buy marbles. The cat's eyes were like five cents each. Well, you could play marbles and win or lose your marbles. I had a bag. I still have that bag somewhere. A leather bag from an Indian reservation that had the coins, the tokens from an Indian reservation gambling casino. I had a bag about, well, about yo big of marbles in that bag. And then I had a jar of marbles and I had a box not a shoe box, just a little box of marbles. I had a couple of hundred, maybe three, four hundred. That was a lot. I was very rich when it came to marbles. I had good marbles too. I had the cat's eyes with the, the, the green cat's eye was the one that was the most hardest to get. I had a lot of those. The, the big ones. Yeah, and they were five cents each. And if you wanted to buy them, you could buy them, but I never, I don't remember buying marbles. I used to win them or lose them. You have to, you have to gamble. At some point, you have to make a gamble. No more. Jim Alva. Jim, you would be sad to know what happened. I, I got to talk to you one day with, to the transits that I had. The transit legs, very sad what happened to them. So, I think I'll end the live stream. Jim, thanks for stopping by. Maybe I'll... Are you still here, Jim? Are you still here? I have... I have money in my Skype account. Let me know if you're still here. I'm going to my Skype account now. I have two numbers for you. Three, four. Okay. I have a number. Well, first of all, I got to find out if Jim is here. Hey, little man, how you doing? Are you enjoying my live stream? Good to hear. You can go over that four hour and 30 minute thing. Okay, Jim is not here. I could go to his channel. <laughs> okay, so if I don't see Jim's name, I don't. I'm going to refresh the page. Sometimes it gets hung up. Okay, Jim is not answering. Uh, I'll have to send him a, a mail. Let's just go right there right now. I'm going to compose a mail to Jim Alver.
I am pretty sure that I have the number. But if you're still listening, I have several numbers for you. I have four different four different numbers it looks like. That's one that ends in five three six. That's that one this one ends in three six six. This one ends in five three six and this one ends in so I got three that ends in five three six and one that ends in three six six okay go back to the three six six three six six or Okay, Jim's mail is out. I haven't talked to Jim in a long time. All right, so I got some stuff to do. And I've already been talking now, going on uh, 45 minutes. Almost an hour. Damn, time flies. I wonder what album that Mothers of Invention. I had a lot. Maybe I had more than two out, three albums. Two or three. I had Weasels Rip My Flesh. Mothers of Invention. Freak Out. I think. I did not buy that Mothers of Invention would eat yellow snow. That, would, that was not something I enjoyed from Frank Zappa. He was such a cold dude, man. He was, and you know that you want to, now I want to tell you something. Look at me. Look, look at me. Look at me. Frank Zappa th did an interview that said he didn't get high. I know for a fact he got high. I know that for a fact. Roger Waters did an interview and said he did not get high. And the other guy, uh, David Gilmore, said he did not get high. And I sat four seats away from the aisle, front row at Madison Square Garden, or, or could have been, it could have been Nassau Coliseum, one of those two. And I sat front row, front row, 12 feet away from the stage, and he was up six feet, seven feet up off the floor, and I watched them get high on stage. Uh, Roger Waters and David Gilmore. I watched it happen. So all of these musicians that say they never smoked, they all lied. They all lied. I don't know why they lied. I mean, I have no idea. But they never, they don't tell you the truth. You get somebody like Jimi Hendrix or Prince, I don't think they ever tried to hide it. I don't know. Jim Morrison, no. But... Frank Zappa, I saw him get high. I saw that. I, it wasn't wasn't my imagination. He was right there, like right here, like here. Here you go. How you doing? Like that. Okay, I watched it happen. All right, so I could shut this one off. I could shut down the Mothers of Invention tab because I don't really care which one the faces are in. I can shut Jim Alvers' channel down. Uh, Jim, I sent you a message if you're still listening. 
fallen asleep in bed or something like that, I could send you, I sent you a mail. How long is this live stream on now? It says, uh, is that really possible? That I've been on for almost an hour? I, it, I started the live stream at about 1030 it's 11.15 now. 45 minutes. Uh, Dennis, you have to... You have to come in with the truth bombs. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. Oh, God, Dennis. Dennis, over four hours. Oh, man, you just killed my whole routine. I'm glad. I'm glad almost, but... I had them go in there for a minute. Uh, he took it down. Yeah, so I've been on here for almost... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. My promo code... My promo code just ended. And this is the... This is the cam that I'm using for my my video, and I don't know that it's going to come back. My, my data, my data just ended, but I switched over to Wi-Fi, and luckily I did because we lost the Wi-Fi three or four times today. So, so here's the bottom line. Here's the skinny. In the last, I've been saying this for six, seven weeks, the internet here goes on and off sometimes. I don't know. Goes on and off sometimes. Eight, four, three, nine, ten, twelve times a day. It just goes off. Sometimes the electric goes off. Sometimes only the internet goes off. The, the lights on my router, they just go off. So if I don't have data, then my internet goes off for four minutes. If it comes right back on. But before it went off and stayed off for a solid 15 minutes. So I use data to look at the comments. I'm, I have it on data. I had data until three minutes ago. So in the Philippines, if you have the extra money, it's $2 per week to have mobile data up to one gig a day. Now I don't use a gig a day. I use on a, on a big, on a big, I go to the city and I watch videos on the way to the city and then I watch them when I'm waiting to pay a bill at the bank or something like that. I might use a half a gig. You're allowed one gig a day. I use a half a gig. But it's one gig a day or seven gigs for the week. It's still one gig a day. If you use a half a gig today, you can't use a gig and a half tomorrow. It's one gig a day. So they tell you, you have one gig a day of free data, seven gigs a week. But if you don't use data for six days, you can't use seven gigs of data on the seventh day. What else did I want to tell you that was like that this morning? I did something this morning that was very much like that. I don't remember what it was. I don't exactly remember what it was. I did something. It wasn't data. It wasn't phone. I don't remember what I did. I did something this morning that used a certain amount of I don't even know if it had to do with the internet, but I don't know what it was. 
but you don't get oh if oh uh, oh yeah 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 I know what it is my internet gives me so much data per month I don't know what it is but I loaded many videos this week some for you know who and others that were one hour videos of friends of mine that I haven't seen in 30 years that I had videos that they would want to watch so I might have loaded 15 one hour videos maybe more and then I loaded a bunch of stuff from my hoodwink by an angel page over to Zionist YouTube because I'm going to use those videos on my Zionist YouTube page as if some of them they were never posted publicly and some of them were but I am still allowed to use them and I'm going to do that so I might have loaded 30 videos from Hoodwink by an Angel and my data slowed down to next to nothing. I couldn't even get online. So I called up Globe and I said, what's going on? Sir, you used up all your data. Would you like to buy an additional $5 worth of data? It was 250 pesos. And I said, no. What about all the months that I only used you know, one, one or two, 10% of my, no, so that, that doesn't count. So in other words, you, you might pay for, let's just say you paid for 10 gigs, 30 gigs of data, 30, one each day. Let's say you pay for 30 gigs of data every month and it costs you 30 bucks. It's more than $30 for the internet. So you're allowed to use all 30 gigs, that in on the internet, you're allowed to use all 30 gigs in two or three days if you want. And then, and then the internet slows down. You'll put the word, type it in, and it'll go A, B, C, like that. Or it'll take three hours to load a seven-minute video. So I call up and the lady says, sir, you used all your data. Would you like to buy an, an extra data? Now this happened before. So I said, well, how much is it? She said, $5, 250 pesos. I said, and how much data will that give me? This is, the, this is everything in the Philippines, everything you do here. They don't give you the information unless you ask for the information. So what is today, the 29th, right? Yeah, it's five years ago, five months ago, it, Barry was uh, put in detention, 28th. That's how I judged my, how long I've been on YouTube. Five months ago, Barry was put in detention on the 28th. So today's the 29th. I would say that happened, well, I got back from my vacation on the 27th. And I loaded videos all day, stuff I did on vacation and stuff that I had on the list. And I just kept loading videos. Like I, I, I went and put down upload a video and I posted, I went into my drive and clicked on the link upload another video and I clicked on the video in the drive. So I did about eight of those, nine of those maybe. And the lady says, would you like to buy another load? I said, yeah. How much is it? She goes, 250 pesos. So I'm all ready to confirm to buy the load on the 28th, right? I think that was at the 28th. I got back on the 27th. Today's the 29th. 28th. I got back that morning of the 27th. Okay, so 
would you like to buy another load? I said, yeah, how much is it? She goes, Two, 250 pesos, $5. I'm already, she goes, but you have to agree. You have to say, I agree to buy a load. It has to be verbal. So I said, well, wait a minute. When does my new 30 gigs kick in? Oh, that'll kick in tonight, sir, at midnight. Do you know that I think she should have offered the information that you'll get more data at midnight, but she didn't. She was willing to make me buy the equivalent of almost an entire month's data for an, an extra $5. It's worth it if you did that on the second or the third of the pay schedule, but if it's the 29th day of the pay schedule and it kicks over, it rolls over at midnight, it's not a good, you have 30 days of free stuff. And if I would have bought it, that 30 days of gigas worth of giga data would have only been good for 14 more hours. It doesn't roll into the next month. So I said, no, if it's gonna roll, if it's gonna roll over at midnight, why would I wanna buy it after I asked her when, when it rolls over? She goes, sir, so you can load your videos. They're important to you, aren't they? Okay, we're done. Bye-bye. And I hung up. And she knows why I hung up. You know why I hung up. They're trying to give you that salesman speech, trying to sell you something. Now, in the meantime, do I need her data? No. Because before I went away, I put a week's data on this phone. And I can load all the videos I made while I was on vacation from this phone to you too, without using data from my computer, because it's two separate things. This is a Globe phone. Globe data is on my phone. I don't need your Globe data on the internet because I have Globe data on the phone. But my point is, she could have been human about the whole thing and said, sir, um, you only have 14 hours to wait. Can you wait? And if you can't wait, then you buy the load. But she didn't even give me that option. I had to ask her. Now, would she give a Filipino the option? Definitely not. No way. They're not going to give you the option. If you ask them a question, they'll tell you the truth. Because my billing cycle, apparently, is the 20. Eighth of the month. So on the 27th, I had 14 hours to go to the billing cycle. I don't think that's reasonable. But they think it is. All right, now I'm definitely done talking. <coughs> I have... I have a cough. Not I have a cough because I, I need water. I need water with lemon. I need water with calamansi. Notice, I didn't stand up to go pee, and I didn't stand up to go get more water, and I drank a liter of water before I started, and I drank a liter of, almost a whole liter of water after I started. That's a long time. I was sitting in this chair on my box in my shack, For four hours, says Dennis Adam. You know what I could do, though? I see 19 people are watching. How many thumbs up do I have? 17 thumbs up. That's really good. Thank you, everybody. Dennis is usually the one that says nine. Not, oh, nine watching. Nine. What the hell? What am I thinking? Nine. Uh, maybe, I'll just, maybe I'll just end the live stream. Popeye, number one editor in all of the Philippines' vlogging genre. That ain't going to change. 155 music and video clips incorporated into one video and 200 words encapsulated in clouds or balloons, whatever you want to call them. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. 
That's a lot of work, Popeye. Even though you didn't pin my comment, even though no one responded to my comment, you got to give Popeye the two thumbs up for that. Ed Lippett, thank you for stopping by, Ed Lippett. Um, Louis Pagan Pont, Scott the Fuego, PA Trucker, thank you very much for the super chat. If you guys want to watch the tribute to Ed Lippett, we could do that. I thought that was really cool. That Popeye did that. Let's uh, let's get that tribute. It was at the 17 minute mark. Okay, good night, Dennis. Thank you. Let's get the uh, Dennis is going. Is he, is he going to stop talking? Is, is he is he going to stop talking? Is, is he going to do that now, or will he do that later? And if he's going to stop talking later, oof. when when later? Dennis is going. When I have to go to sleep, I have to put coal in the antrophite antrophite coal stove. I have I have things to do. When is Fazio going to stop talking? So let me get that video up. Uh, science fiction Popeye. Let's get Popeye. Popeye one channel. 17 minutes, the Ed Lippett tribute. Okay, here we go. I was one of the nicest parts of the video. That, that was the nicest part of the video, actually. Okay, so let's, let me get the. Okay, okay, I got the, I have the, I have the, I had to do something. 4 a.m. here, yes. Dennis, 4 a.m. Let's go to memory lane. Uh, that guy. That guy, Popeye, Popeye destroyed a couple of people in uh, in his live stream. I like the way. Turn yourself in, Allo. Here is the Ed Lippet segment of the video. Right after this guy, Popeye destroys him. Uh, Add your head. Would you like that? Uh, let's go to the Ed Lippet section right here. Here we go. 17 minutes and 43 seconds. That's seven. At. 17, 43, Ed Lippet, E-D, L-I-P-P-I-T-T-E, Ed Lippet. How, do you, how does he spell Ed Lippet? L-I-P-P-I-E-I-E-I-E. L I P P L I P P L I P P I E okay I E E T T no E at the end okay Ed Lippet link L I N K and we'll get that posted in my video as well before I start this tribute to a Vietnam War veteran named Ed Lippett, who's a member of the Philippines vlogging genre. And then we'll play that snippet. Nice tribute. And then we're gonna get that in the video details at the top of the page. Let's get the live stream going here. Let's get this right. Okay, we lost the ability to put that stuff in there. Okay, we won't worry about that. 
We won't worry about that. Okay, so we'll get that later because I'm going to post it into a mail. I'm going to compose something to myself. I'll put Ed Lippett. Ed. And I'll just send that out. Okay, so let's watch. The Ed Lippett tribute on the Popeye One channel. Turn this around. And then after that, I'm definitely going to end the live stream. My utmost respect to Ed Lippett, a proud Vietnam veteran. Okay, here we go. It's only about a minute. This is the end, beautiful prayer. This is the end, my only friend, the end. Okay, that is the end. And remember, Popeye also was a 20-year veteran. Thank you for service, for your service. I'm Pink Permi from Michael Fazio. Popeye, Ed Lippett, Scott Del Fuego, Lewis, Pagan Punch, Jim, Alva, Dennis, Adam, B.J. Smith, Pennsylvania Trucker. And if I forgot your name, I apologize. When this song ends, the music's over. This is the end. I'm being permanent from the Philippines, baby. Bye-bye for now.